I, I, mine says recording. Mine says recording. Okay, great. Here we go. Time for this special episode of the John Wobble podcast for the Oscars. And we're recording in video. And uh, it'll be on YouTube, but we also have the audio version out. And I'm here with James Haley, who's been on before. And Hello. for the first time, we have DJ Hirsch, who uh-huh. uh, happens to be a sexist. Oh my God. <laughs> that's why you didn't see women talking right dj that was the reason <laughs> that was the only reason i said i will see all of these movies but not if it is about females and speaking because they should no no my god that is so not true i, I did not you get to the film and i wish that i did <laughs> you're canceled well no it sucks because like I uh I had to see that last minute. I almost didn't get to see it because it's not showing anywhere and you can't stream it. Yeah, the only two movies I would say that were part of the um main nominations, I would say, at least for like performance and directing and best picture, uh, that I didn't see were Women Talking and Living. And both of those movies were impossible to see because they're not streaming and they're being shown at like very small movie theaters scattered about um so it made it very difficult to see them yeah it's tough it's uh and so i'll just say gosh um i don't like addressing the listeners head on because i like to just talk to whoever's here but i'll just uh, let me just do a quick disclaimer so we're gonna go and then we can just talk uh so we're gonna go (laughs) through we, we tried to see as much as we could. There's like, it's a lot, you know? Uh, it's just a big time commitment, really. But so we're going to go through the Oscar nomination list. Um, we're going to exclude short films, documentaries, and animated films, because that's like six more categories. But we're going to just go through everything else, kind of just doing our best. And, and if we didn't see something, we'll say it. Um, but fortunately, there, there was a ton of overlap, so that did help. Like, in the main category, well, in all the categories that I didn't list, I think it's 19 films cover all the nominations. So it's not impossible to see everything, but it it's freaking hard because, you like, I didn't see most of these movies during the year. I, I Pretty think, expensive, too. Yeah, it adds up. Like, if it's... <laughs> Yeah, I will say I know for myself, I had a bit of a um, advantage because my father is in the DGA. So ah. he had a lot of screeners. Um, and I actually called him yesterday asking if there was any chance I could watch his screener of women talking or living. And both of them had actually expired. So, oh, damn. Uh, but a few of them, that's how I saw them. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. did uh, when we get to some of these picks, did you talk to him all about like his perspective on some of these categories? No, uh, I gonna vote for <laughs> what? Who's he gonna vote for? Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't think he like votes. I do. I don't know if the DGA have awards. I'm sure they do, but he, I don't know that he actually votes. Yeah. Um, he's also he wasn't like like he was a director of of news. Um, so he wasn't like a, like a creative director, right? Like he wasn't like directing films. He wasn't a filmmaker. Yeah. Um, I never really talked to him about his opinions on these things. My mom a little bit, but her and I have very differing opinions a lot of times. So uh, I feel like, well, that's good. Cause I think that reminds me, cause I think the three of us have very different opinions too, which is why I, I think this will be fun. <laughs> I know we do. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's like I've talked, I've spoken to both of you separately with some of these categories, and it's just like, are you crazy? <laughs> like, did you watch the same movie as me? Like, what? What are you talking about? Um, gosh, but uh, I think you're missing one huge uh, disclaimer. Uh, oh, spoiler alert! D- we will be talking about these movies as if to spoil them. Correct. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. So if you haven't seen these movies, that's their own fault. <laughs> turn this off and spend the money we did to watch these movies. Yeah. God. <laughs> Most actually, of them were able to be streamed from your from the comfort of your home. Most Yeah, of them. but one yeah. you had to see on an IMAX in 3D and that one that one was a big hit. 
Yeah. <laughs> um, I saw that one on the biggest screen possible. I went to City Walk and I saw an IMAX 3D. I I wanted to get the full experience. For yeah, sure. yeah. That's yeah. the only way to do it. <laughs> um. Yeah. I. Gosh. I want to. I'll give some of my. Oh. I. That. That made me think of some of my like. Um. Sort of like. Uh, overall opinions of this whole experience i don't want to spoil like my picks but we'll try and get through the picks but um i will say that one thing that you just made me think about is um during the lead up to this and seeing like different articles written about these oscar nominees it's clear that most people do not watch all the films like people <laughs> are talking about these nominations like who's gonna <clears throat> win well, based on these other award shows, and it's like, well, so it's not based on their performance. Yeah. You're, you're, you're basing it on like the politics of everything and perception and uh, like, no. Kind of guess. I right. will say for myself, I like, I'm not going to give away any of my picks at this moment, but I will say for a lot of them, I'm going to have two opinions. I'm going to have the yeah. opinion of who I think will win and who I believe should win. And that's, that's for me. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but that's what I'm going to say. And sometimes maybe they'll match up, but sometimes they probably won't. So. Yeah. I, I have, I have no idea who's going to win some of these awards. I, I, I will have my opinion. And then like, I'm not trying to, like, I can't say, oh, I'm going to put my money on who I think will win because I have honestly no idea. Because some of these movies, I watched them and I was just like, what? Like, or, and there are some movies that I love that weren't nominated for some of these categories. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, well, and I, and I've said this to you, John, before, but I have this theory that if you took a person who knew nothing about any of the backstory of yeah. like how these films are made or like what careers these actors have had. And you just sat them down and made them watch the films for the performances or for the quality of the film. I think the people that though, or like the people or the films that that, that person would choose will not be what ends up actually winning because it yeah. becomes such a political thing. Yeah. Well, well said. I was uh, hanging out with James last night and we were talking about uh Leonardo DiCaprio and how like he I Red think Man. I think he yeah he won the the Oscar for best best ask best Oscar for the Revenant and uh best Oscar for the Revenant or best actor Oscar yeah whatever I'm saying I'm, I've only had a couple sips and here I go <laughs> um no I definitely don't like I when I think of him I don't think of that as his career defining work it was almost <laughs> like he was it felt like he was overdue and there was no as far as I remember there was no one else jumping out that had a winning performance so I disagree with that I, I and I know this is especially to in today's climate this is a very controversial opinion but I do believe uh Eddie Redmayne was up for the Danish girl that year and oh, yeah. just what won the year prior for the theory of everything but I personally believe that he should have won it again uh, Honestly, in today's climate there's there's a lot to be said about you know um cis male actors playing transgender characters and i totally understand that but just based on the performance alone i do believe that yeah. was that, i think that was after the backlash of um the 30 seconds of uh, mars guy winning for um uh, Fair enough, yeah. the dallas buyers club yeah mm -hmm. um, which i didn't see any of those movies so i can't comment on them but yeah um anyway i do i do agree that leo seems in my mind like i'm like yeah of course it, it feels right that he's an oscar winning actor it's just odd to me when you see that that's the movie he won for you're like what you know like not yeah. the aviator not wolf of wall street not like these other like huge or movies blood diamond. Movie, or blood diamond blood or diamond. the parted i mean all these great films that he's been in where he gives such powerhouse performances yeah but anyways yeah but it, yeah i overall going back to your point yeah there's there there's definitely politics involved um let's try and knock out some of these categories shall we like um i don't want to dismiss any of these categories but i feel like the truth is some, some are more important than others some are <laughs> some are more important than others i mean of course we need four acting nominations as opposed to <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I guess I'm only one of the few people who thinks four is a lot, but, um, no, we'll, we'll save best picture and actor categories last. 
I think, and we'll try and get through some of the other ones like best sound and, and some of these, like, for example, so let's start with best sound. Personally, I have a hard time making this pick because for me, when I watch a movie, I'm not actively thinking about the sound. And I think the mark of great sound would be that it's just, you're, you're not even, it. It, yeah, you're not noticing it. It's just like naturally, uh, carrying a, a big part of the experience so i'm just gonna make my best pick on this but just to look at this we have all quiet on the western front avatar the way of water the batman elvis and top gun maverick and um i guess did did you all see all those five movies i did see each one of those okay how about you james uh i think i did yeah okay so I guess we can take turns uh, with who goes first, but I'll go first on this uh, on this category. So keeping in mind what I just said, my thinking was um, nothing really stood out to me too much. Um, I would say probably not Elvis. I think there was cool things about the sound with all the other films that I kind of remember noticing when like the music would kick in or just like, the just, I don't know, the audible experience was mm -hmm. intense, but, and fun, like especially Top Gun had some cool, cool moments to it, but I'm ultimately gonna pick Avatar The Way of Water because that film is like <laughs> entirely fake. And so <laughs> the fact that they were able to create a whole world of sound, I think that's that's gonna be the simple way I make my pick that like, they created all of that and that is just so impressive to me um james how about you i'll go top gun i think i think uh you know it, they weren't actually flying those airplanes yeah uh, they were <laughs> well they weren't piloting them but they were in the planes didn't you know that uh i did not yeah but, dude uh, they had to collect that sound somehow so i'm gonna give it to them <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, hold on a second. No, that was part of the cool thing about the making of that film was they had two seater uh, airplanes and they had like pro professional f pilots flying them and then they would stick the actor in the back seat and they had they had like five cameras set up. Seriously. Well, that's that's one of the main reasons I want to be an actor. Uh, <laughs> I want to do cool shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, I'll go with Top Gun. All right. And DJ, <clears throat> how about you? Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree where I feel like other than Elvis, they all probably had elements that gave them uh, really, really interesting um, choices for, for winning this category. But I, I would say for me, it would be between Top Gun and the Batman. Okay. Um, but I think overall, I would also go with Top Gun. Um, I did, I did know that they were in the, <laughs> the real planes. But even having said that, it's like, that's still, they have to, like you said, they have to collect that sound somehow. So I don't know if they just used the sound that was actually created while the, they were filming or if they created that, you know, outside of that. But I would say for that film to be what it is with all the sounds that it needs and for me to not sit there thinking, wow, this sounds bad. That's pretty impressive compared to the other nominees. All right. Two for Top Gun Maverick. One we're not keeping Maverick. score here. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> It is a competition. <laughs> we'll see who's right on March 14th or what, when is the Oscars? The 12th or anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, I think it's, I think it's Sunday, March 12th. So this episode is probably coming out the week before at March 5th. Anyways, here we go. Moving on. Best makeup and hairstyling. So the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, The Batman, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, and The Whale. Um... Let's start with James on this category. And from here on out, just just give a disclaimer if you missed any of these films. Um, didn't see The Whale or Black Panther. Um, I'll go with The Batman. Uh, I thought they did some cool things. Uh, really made it uh, different from all the other Batmans. And I'll say the makeup and hair styling had a lot to do with that. All right the batman and dj how about you um i i hope i don't take too much time in saying this but i i actually think this is going to be a very competitive category because thinking about i did see each one of these films and i could see 
a justification for each one of these films winning. I think All Quiet on the Western Front had really interesting makeup in terms of there were lots of shots of, you know, characters just covered in dirt and mud. Um, the Batman, you know, was was very stylized, especially, you know, all those like superhero type characters, but in the gritty vision of this version of the movie. Um, Black Panther obviously um, has a lot of that really great Wakanda style that they created. Um, I guess that maybe would be more in like the costumes than the makeup and hairstyling. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Um, and then with Elvis, I think, you know, obviously the makeup and hairstyling added so much to making him become the iconic character that is Elvis. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I would say ultimately my pick would be the whale because ah. um, what they did to make Brendan Fraser uh, look the way he looked in the film was pretty astonishing. And also... Mm -hmm hearing about Brendan Fraser talk about it and how even being in the makeup that they put him in, it made him feel as though he really was as heavy as the character is. So I, I my pick would be the whale. All right. Interesting. Uh, as for my pick, um, I agree with some of what you all said. So I saw, so I saw everything um, in all the categories for the most part, uh, but, uh, for, but for this, uh, wait, what'd you say? Overachiever. That's right. Well, because just side note, because originally the plan was let's try and see the the 10 best picture uh, nominees. And then I did the math and I was like, oh, if I want to add on all the actor categories, it's like four more. And then I realized I only had two left after that to see the rest. So anyways, it just that's what happened. Uh, so my pick. So for me, this is tough. And I agree. This is a tough category. Uh, for me, I narrowed it down to All Quiet on the Western Front and Wakanda Forever. And it's also a tough category because I feel like what I'm thinking about is the makeup of All Quiet on the Western Front, for the reasons you said. And I'm thinking about the hairstyling of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And the more I think about it, I feel like those could almost be two separate categories that just happen to be combined. Yeah. And it's tough. And I, just to get to the point, I ended up saying All Quiet on the Western Front just because it it just stood out to me more for the storytelling element. I don't know, like um, the hair was really cool in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And obviously it's part of the culture of most of the people you're seeing in like most of the characters in that movie but um but i just have to say what stood out to me and and carried the story more and that would be i would say the makeup in all quiet on the western front so but yeah that's a tough one that's a really tough one and i've i thought about that one for quite a while but let's move on we're moving on to costume design and in this category, we have Babylon, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Elvis, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, and Miss Harris Goes to Paris. DJ, let's start with you. All right. So uh, disclaimer, I did not see Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Um, I believe this was the only Oscar nomination for that film. So it having not seen it, I can't give an opinion mm -hmm. about it, but I would say it must have had some great costumes uh, to get noticed for this for this uh, category, but I will not share an opinion on it because I haven't seen it. Um, having said that, my pick would be Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, I do think that Babylon would be like a short second because I I liked Babylon a lot more than I feel like it was widely enjoyed. Um, and I think that it could have gotten even more love, but specifically i thought like you know the costumes very much told you know where when it was when like when it took place which was the 20s um but i will say i thought black panther wakanda forever really sticks out to me for this category um because they really i feel like they really tell a good story with the costumes uh that everyone wears in that movie and it just tells you exactly who they are right away um and they're not costumes that you would see anywhere else um so yeah my pick is black panther wakanda forever okay 
Um, I think I'll go second now. Uh, side note, Miss Harris Goes to Paris was a great, cute film. I, it's it's right up my alley. I love that. I mean, it's like in the, it's, if you like Downton Abbey, you'd probably like it, you know? So it, it was like right up my alley. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, but so this was a little tough because at first nothing really jumped out at me, but in thinking about it more, and then also I rewatched some of this the a few of these movies I went back and rewatched some stuff um not necessarily specific to this category but like everything um in general and the one that stood out to me and my pick is everything everywhere all at once I just think um that's where I saw the most creativity in terms of creating something specific for that movie um everything everything else uh I don't know, but I guess you not to be a hater, but I feel like a lot of the other costume stuff I saw in the other nominees, um, it just didn't like it. I guess it it was just sort of like, oh yeah, this that goes along with that movie. Whereas everything, everywhere, all at once, I felt there was so many more details in the costumes that really jumped out at me. And I thought it was just so clever and added so much more to the experience for me. So, uh, and also not to mention just how unique Joe Butabaki's uh, costumes were. Yeah, I mean it's you know uh, for example I'll I'll use Babylon as an example because that was one I'm okay to talk smack about it because that was one of my favorite movies that might have been like my second favorite movie this year and it, so I love it, but you know you know it was great but it, it it was kind of what you know I guess you could almost say the costumes were glamorous uh but it was also kind of what you would expect for a period piece you know whereas everything ever all at once like and maybe this is maybe this is kind of like how actors uh have the benefit if they have a better script you know like they they have an advantage and maybe you could say that about everything everywhere all at once because there was so there was so much room for so much creativity for the costume design where they they literally had a multiverse of options. So, yeah, like they could do whatever batshit crazy stuff they wanted to do. And and I guess that ultimately is maybe why I'm picking it. So anyways, but as a costume designer, when you hear hot dog fingers, I mean, yeah, <laughs> go, right. I know. That would be that would be what uh, makeup, right? Yeah. Probably. I don't know. Is it makeup? Is it costumes? Well, the whale that the gut was his belly was makeup, right? Because you were talking about the weight that he was feeling. It wasn't just yeah, the weight. Yeah, but I think it was in. considered costuming. Or well, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Then, that for the whale, though. Makeup. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you're right. compromise, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> so. When we're talking about makeup, it's about yeah. makeup. When we're talking about costuming, it's about costuming. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, James, what's your pick for best costume? Does well, let me ask you this, John. Do you feel there's an argument to be made that everything, everywhere, all at once is costumes were just flamboyant and crazy just to be flamboyant and crazy? Um, ah, that's an interesting argument. Um, because they look great. I'm looking at the Google images and they look like, like a, like a, like a runway model but, for creative, uh, you know, um, avant-garde kind of costumes but there is there is a um like i would say there is a unifying theme that matches the film itself and then i'm not even just taught i will say this the costumes that stand out to me are not even just the crazy stuff like the way that it it seems like a stupid thing to say but the way that everyone was dressed when they go to the see the IRS agent and all that stuff, mm -hmm. like it was perfect because it was like both boring and pedestrian, but also there was a certain humor about it. And so it's not, I didn't think it was just the over the top stuff. They had that mm -hmm. as like one, one aspect of the spectrum, but I think even the, the more mu quote unquote mundane stuff even had like 
I, don't, I just thought it was so cool. Like it, it, each character shows up and the way that they're presented is just, to me, is like perfect. Okay. <clears throat> I only saw everything everywhere and Elvis. I'm going to go with Elvis. I mean, he looked just like Elvis and uh, the costume <laughs> had a lot to do with it. Um, I, I'll i say more about the movie later, um, but the costumes were on point. <laughs> okay. I'm just jotting this stuff down uh, yeah, for, the, for the recap at the end yep. and keeping score. <laughs> so <laughs> next up, we have best visual effects. So we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, Batman, Black Panther, and Top Gun. I think it's my turn to go first. I think that we are seeing the future of storytelling, and I cannot not pick Avatar The Way of Water for best visual effects. I think everyone will be making movies like the team behind Avatar and they We've are- had 3D for a while though. It's not 3D though. It's 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 not 3D. You have to watch, I suggest everyone watch um, like a little behind the scenes because what they're doing, this is what's so crazy about it. They, um. It's not even just created a new way of filmmaking for this. And, right? and to, to be fair, other people do this, but they are the leaders. They like they are the the flagship product of this technology that like they use it for video games as well. Where basically it's the whole thing where you take actors and you put dots all over their faces, but then you also they're doing other elements where they have cameras capturing their performances in a way that's more accurate than before. Um, but I, I want to make sure I don't talk too much about this because I want to make sure I just get to the point and explain it correctly. But basically what they're able to do is they're able to have all their actors go into a warehouse and they're able to digitally track their performances, um, like their bodies, their faces, everything. And they basically have all this data, okay, of the entire performance then they're able to go into the computer and they're able to see the whole thing in 3D, like in a, in a three-dimensional video game where you could run all over the place, they're able to do that with Avatar. So the camera angles you're seeing are not like, oh, let's hold a camera here. They are doing everything after the fact because the entire movie exists as a three-dimensional virtual reality thing mm -hmm. and so and i don't think that's true for the entire movie actually it's that's mainly for certain chunks of it but that is going to be the technology that leads us to virtual reality storytelling where you won't be watching a, a rectangle on a wall you're going to be like running through the jungle while the humans are shooting at you. And you're like with the Navi and you're like, fuck, you know, like mm -hmm. that's going to be the future of storytelling. And the, some of the stuff that they're doing is just so, uh, it's just so important for that. Uh, that's why I'm picking them. But enough about that. That's my, that's why I'm picking them just because I think they're so important for where technology is going. Anyways, James, you're up. Uh, I was going to say Avatar for a few different reasons. Um, it looked really cool. Um, and I think, <laughs> I mean, this is like a 10-year project. Um, and, you know, we're, if it's just about visual effects, then yeah, the, the visual effects blew me away more than um, the other movies. Do I mean, mean, Top Gun, how, what, what kind of effects were there? They were actually flying the, the planes there. <laughs> How easy know. is that? Practical <laughs> visual effects. Uh, DJ, how about you? Um, I have to pick Avatar The Way of Water. I think the whole purpose of the movie, in a way, was specifically because of how it's how it is visually. I mean, I I personally did enjoy the film for what it is, but I think what it is is literally a feat of visual effects. I mean, even something as simple as um, I can't think of the character's name, but like the, the little Jake Tarzan Sully. boy, who uh, the little Tarzan boy, oh, oh. Uh, spider, spider, spider. Yeah. 
Uh, so I I heard <clears throat> that they had to film his stuff on set with everyone, which again, this was filmed like almost 10 years ago. So he was so young. And then he had to refilm it like four years later because yeah. they needed to map it on top of itself. And, uh, you know, just knowing, just, I mean, the amount of work that had to go into creating what ended up being delivered into theaters, which was astounding visually. Um, I don't see how anything could win over it. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you're both correct. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving right along. Uh, uh, best production design. Uh, we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar the Way of Water, Babylon, Elvis, and the Fablemans. Um, what, so, what is production design? Um, so I let me get the official um, definition. I, as far as I understand it, you're basically creating the like not just the set, but I think it's also encompassing some of the other design categories we already talked about. So like if you're talking about the production design for Babylon, you're in charge of, okay, it's got, everything has to be in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all quiet on the Western front. Okay. It's the Western front. Um, let me just, I just want to make sure that I read this correctly though. Cause that uh, D DJ, do you think I'm wrong, or do you think? No, I think you're right, but I I am curious as well. Just seeing the Fablemans on here, I'm like, how? How did that one make it into this category? <laughs> well, because they'll you know they'll say how that... did that one make it into this category, and something like Black Panther, but kind of forever didn't. You know, like yeah. that's where <laughs> I would go. I would switch those two out. Everything else makes a, makes somewhat sense. Well, it's uh, because the it was still the Fablemans was a period piece technically. It's just, yeah. I mean, you know, they did spend time in a high school gym. I don't, you know. Oh, I don't... so yeah, it's uh. Sorry to cut you off. I just found it. So the original name for this award was Best Art Direction, and uh, Black Panther should be nominated. I'm sorry, Black Panther should be nominated. I well, I disagree with that, but I don't think it should win, but I think it should be nominated over the Fablemans. Maybe. Honestly, yeah, I don't know. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Like the thing that one of the reasons why I think it didn't live up to the first one was kind of I don't know, it just felt more plasticky to me. It just felt more like like I could tell, oh, they're standing in front of a green screen right now, as opposed to normally, I know they're all in front of green screens, but normally you don't think about that. You know, it's normally it's like, okay, guys, hold your spears and stand here and you're looking out and, um, and even, something like, even something like the whale, I think could have been, could have been put in this category over the Fablemans. I don't know, like the Fablemans was a great film. I'm not knocking it. I just think, I don't think production design when I think that movie. Person. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Um, uh, but I could, <clears throat> but at the same thing, well, we can get into that film a little bit more, but the Fablemans, I think. Or the is, Batman. Yeah, actually the Batman would have been cool. Um, I do think the thing with the What's Fablemans, the definition? Uh, <clears throat> let's see here. Maybe the voters didn't know either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh, in film. So it's a collaboration with set decorator and set designers. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, basically it. So the, the locations and so, the background of it all. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I will say, though, what was I going to say? The Fablemans, I think, and this is going to be a reoccurring thing. I think the Fablemans is probably a technically excellent film but maybe not emotionally <laughs> like just to give some insight into what i felt about that movie like i think you might be able to say that about production design like maybe there are things about the people who are more uh well versed in that category maybe they just feel like that was technically perfect even though it was a little bit 
I don't know, less noticeable in my I guess opinion. what I'll say is since I, I feel like we're having a discussion about this specific film within this yeah. category, I guess what I will say is considering what the film is, its production design is great and there's not a problem with it at all. That's my point. That's my I point. Just, I just think that there were films that had more interesting oh, needs yeah. in terms of production design mm. that very easily that did fulfill their own briefs as well, if not better. That's and all. Here, and to your point, the Batman, yes, I I really liked that movie, and I would have put it in there over the Fable Ends for sure. Um, but we we got sidetracked. James, you're up on your pick for this. I'm gonna go <clears throat> going with now that I know the definition. I'm actually gonna say All Quiet on the Western Front. Um, <clears throat> I learned about trench warfare in in history, and I was like, okay, I get it. But this one actually kind of really blew me away and in, in, in as far as like oh they're just going back and forth and they're like trading trenches and these trenches look awful and i think even as basic as just a trench is it was such a big part of the movie and to show um and you know 1920s uh, um europe you know all that kind of stuff those tanks and just all that set decor decor um I thought they nailed it. Yeah. That's fair. DJ? <clears throat> um, I share the same sentiment. I My pick is All Quiet on the Western Front. I thought uh, the movie just looked phenomenal. Um, and a lot of that was due to how well th they, you know, were able to get, um, you know, the different locations they were filming at. Like, it just, I mean, it really brought me back brought me back to that when I was like, uh, it brought me it brought me to that time and place you know what I mean um it I just yeah I don't know I mean the other movies in this category other than the Fablemans were all great as well I I think there's a case to be made for Babylon in this in this category as well but my pick would be all quiet on the western front okay well, for me, uh, it came down to All Quiet on the Western Front and Avatar, and I think I'm biased. I pick Avatar The Way of Water. I just think, uh, yeah, I'm a nerd. They created this amazing digital world, and I love it. I love <laughs> it so much, and I want to give it all the praise I can, so that's my pick. Uh, but All Quiet on the Western Front, yeah, that's like... I, that might be the most underrated movie of the year because people are just like, oh, what is it? A a remake or what? You know, um, I feel like if it wasn't, good. I feel like if it wasn't on Netflix and you had to see it in the theater, it would have created more of a buzz. Yeah. And if it I, hadn't been made, if there wasn't already versions of it, if it yeah. was like just on its own merits to <laughs> kind of what the point DJ brought up earlier, if, if it was truly on its own merits, I think, I don't know. That might be getting so much more attention, actually, the more I think. I just remember when I watched it, I was not, to be honest, before watching it, I was not excited to watch it. I didn't think I was going to enjoy it. I, I felt like it was going to be a chore to watch. And I mean, that was the movie I feel like I had the strongest 180 of opinion on where I was like, wow, you know. Um, and But we'll, we can get into that more yeah. when we talk about Best Picture. Cool. Oh, that's for me. Well, DJ, we're going to stay with you because we're going to move on to best original score. We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Babylon, The Banshees of Inishirin. It's Inishirin, right? Inishirin. Inishirin. Okay. Ed, Ed Sheeran. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. In Ed Sheeran. And <laughs> The Banshees of Ed Sheeran uh, and The Fablemans. And so, DJ, what is your thoughts? um to be honest this is not a category i feel like i focused on too much when i'm watching the movies but i will say there are two movies that i feel like i can remember the music having a definite overall effect on how i was feeling about it and those two movies are all quiet on the western front and everything everywhere all at once um and i don't know if that's going to be the same opinion for you guys but those are the two that stick out in my mind i specifically remember with all quiet on the western front the music almost had this like weird like sci-fi feel to it yeah uh, you're right yeah. it was very i i was like i don't know how this is how this is supposed to be making me feel but it 
it um it kind of like added to this like eerie feeling that I feel like a lot of like war films don't elicit. And this one, it just felt like, wow, I feel like this is putting me in the in the mindset I didn't know I needed to be in to watch this movie. Um, and then on the other side, everything everywhere all at once, you know, I'm I'm specifically thinking about the three points where it says like part one, everything, and it has those big like, you know like big yeah. score moments with the music. And I thought that was very effective, but that's really all I can think about when I think of it. So just based on that alone and not really honestly remembering the scores for any of the other films, I'm going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front. Okay. Let me jot that down for my notes. Um, my turn. So this comes down to th three movies for me, All Quiet on the Western Front, Everything Ever All at Once, and Babylon. And I felt very similar to you about how the music had a really cool um, effect on the two movies you mentioned. The thing about Babylon is there was, of all these movies, like the one where I actively was enjoying the music was Babylon. Um, and it's not by coincidence. Um, if you have, if for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's like, you know, kind of a jazz, it's a jazz score, which is very much in line with Damien Chazelle's films. Cause he's, he's clearly a jazz lover. And my understanding is that this guy, what's his name? Uh, Justin Hurwitz made, uh, he made an original jazz score for this film and it was oh, wow. beautiful. Yeah, it's not. It's like I mean, it li w watching the film is like you're listening to a jazz album. It's not like you're just having, you know, these other films are doing, you know, what a score should do, which is accent what you're watching. But um, it, it's kind of apples and oranges because they're. Do I feel like they're s sort of doing different things, but I think just on its merits, Babylon was such good music overall. <laughs> so that's my pick. James? I'm going to abstain, but I do have a prediction. Okay. I think uh, the Fablemans will win because it's done by John Williams. <laughs> and uh, I think everyone loves him. So okay. <laughs> I'll follow through my prediction. But I, I, I honestly didn't pay attention, so I'm not going to pretend and waste everyone's time. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, no, John Williams is probably the greatest uh, film composer of all time. I think he may have also said this was his official last film. Oh, wow. That's I a shame. think I could be completely wrong. I should actually, let me look that up really quickly. Because <laughs> um, I, I could be that. completely wrong. But, uh, well, he must be pretty old. I mean, he's been making his... He, oh, never mind. Wars, right? His last film will be the upcoming Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Mm, nice. Okay. That's more poetic of an ending there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I think I just heard that his last film was coming up. I think that's what it was. Oh, okay. So now I think it's my turn as to start as we go into the next category, which is best original song. Now, uh, just a side note, if anyone wants to listen to all these songs, you can just go on YouTube and there's a compilation. It's like 15 minutes long and you just hear them all back to back. Um, so the five songs nominated are Applause from Tell It Like a Woman, which I actually didn't see that movie. I just listened to the song because... I didn't want to <clears throat> watch a whole movie just for one song. Um, That's it. <laughs> Hold My Hand from <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. Lift Me Up from Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Uh, not To Not To from... Uh, do you say... Do people say RRR or Triple R? Or I guess you can say whatever you want. But I that was... Uh, uh, otherwise, <laughs> anything about it. They, yeah. The, but um, I think I've heard RRR. Okay, and then this is a life from everything, everywhere, all at once. So, um, I will say this: the best song, because you're you're meant to just pick the song as a standalone song. Um, the best song by far for me is "Lift Me Up" from Wakanda Forever. Like it's the best written song. I will just say an honorable mention real quick that the best performance of a song, because most of these are just like essentially music playing, you know, while you're, while something else is going on. The best performance is Natu Natu from RRR. Like 
it's just like i mean it's that bollywood style and it's fun and it's cheesy but it's like it's awesome it's so cool it's so it's so fun and um i had the greatest emotional reaction to that song watching it and hearing it in the movie whereas the other ones i'm you know was yeah from rrr rrr but yeah my my official pick is lift me up uh james abstaining didn't listen to any of them okay I'm an I'm in the uh not in the music industry. I'm in the film industry. <laughs> okay. EJ? Um, so I did listen to um them all back to back in the YouTube link that you provided, John, today in the shower. I abstained um, from that link. <laughs> and um, so okay, so I will say this is the first category I'm gonna give one of my what I think will win and what okay. I believe should win opinions. So uh what do you think will win? What we'll I believe really will you. win is Not You, Not You. And while oh. I do completely agree, it's a very fun song. And uh, and it's just it's just won every award up to this point. And so I think it, it's a shoe in to win. And I think it's great. I think that is so lovely for this song. I know nothing about this film, to be honest. Um, I will say the lyrics are not in English, so I don't know what they're saying. Um, but, you know, the, it is a very fun tune. It's very upbeat. It's 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 a fun song. Having said that, the type of music that I personally would listen to, I am split between Lift Me Up and This Is A Life. Okay. And um, those are both songs that I'm like, oh, like this is very my vibe of music. Yeah. And overall, I uh, share your sentiment. I would pick Lift Me Up. I think it's okay. a powerful song while also fitting my personal vibe of what I like in music. All right. So I'm putting you down for lift me up because that's what you. But we also know what you think will win. But yeah, yeah, and I. But I will say I. But just let it be known. I do think Nacho Nacho is going to win. But my personal pick would be lift me up. And just so you have one for me, I'll say hold my hand so Lady Gaga wins again. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, honestly is a re- is actually a, re- a better song than I think even people give it credit for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay um moving on we're we're getting close to the actors everyone um up next we have best film editing nominees are the banshees of ed sheeran elvis everything everywhere all at once tar and top gun maverick james you're up um gosh i'll i'm i'm usually not that good with editing but um you can't abstain I, I, from this one. You have to. I'd have say uh, probably everything, everywhere, all at once. Um, the just the way they were cutting in between uh, those different universes um, is uh, is pretty challenging, and um, so I'll go with that one. Okay, DJ. Um. Yeah. So <clears throat> I have a strong opinion on two of these movies, <clears throat> and they are Everything Everywhere All at Once and Tar. Now, I'll talk about Tar first because I think the editing was so interesting because at the beginning of the film, and this is actually something, John, you and I spoke about, the beginning of the film, there are a lot of very long, unbroken takes mm-hmm. where, you know, the it's almost as if the film was unedited, right? And it, And they just allowed the film to go on. But then for the rest of the film after that, that was just so not the case. But those first two... Like there's two shots specifically that I'm thinking of that are just very long takes. Like they stand out in my mind, but I don't know if that's necessarily something that I would chalk up to good film editing. Uh, So for that reason, I definitely, I think without a doubt, hands down, this there's no way anything but everything everywhere all at once is winning this award because uh, for exactly what you said, James, I mean, just cutting between all the different universes and i mean even just the the shot of joe butabaki turning her neck and like it just like switches to all these different shots i mean it it was just it's just done so seamlessly um i'll even get a little bit more into it when we get into the best actress category because i have more to say on it but it has to do with michelle yo's performance so i'll abstain from talking about it now but my pick is everything everywhere all at once okay I agree. Everything Everywhere All at Once is my pick. I loved it. I um, The way I'll, I'll say two things real quick. 
Um, because film editing to me is not also just about cutting between takes, but it also could include like color correction. It could include, well, it could include a lot of things. Um, but um, the the thing I'll point out, as I've mentioned for one or two other categories, is that the editing is something that kind of stands out to me in this film. Like, like the way that they edit the film has such it's almost like impact. This yeah it's, right? it's part of the experience um and so that's that's why yeah i i'm not even thinking about these other movies when i'm thinking about editing but what i will say as honorable mention film uh, a film that was not even nominated avatar the way of water i mean the editing they had to do in that to make they had to combine because I was just talking about how a lot of it is all in this digital world, but the thing is they were, it wasn't all digital because they were combining it with the real world with people in water. And there were parts where people were half, like there was parts where you would have spider who's like a human next to the Navi who are motion capture on a fake animal while they're in the water in reality, but also on a planet. And the fact that they are able to make that all work seamlessly, uh, yeah, I don't know why they're not nominated. I guess I don't know enough about editing, but they deserve some recognition, in my opinion. Anyways. It's more of an art production thing, if you ask me. No, but <laughs> disagree. <laughs> um, moving on. Okay, this is uh, one of the uh, really big categories, um, <clears throat> although it had coming up, but uh, we have Best Cinematography, which had um, uh, some films that were only nominated for this category. We got All Quiet on the Western Front, Bardo, Elvis, Empire of Light, and Tar. So I think we're at DJ. I think DJ is leading us off on this. So uh, disclaimer, I did not see two of the films in this category. I did not see Bardo or Empire of Light, so I will not be sharing an opinion on those two films. Having said that, I think this is hands down, All Quiet on the Western Front, no other contenders. I think that film blew everything out of the water, in my opinion. All right. I will um, I will say that I watched all five, um, and ultimately my pick is the same as you, All Quiet on the Western Front. Because um, I think there's a lot of nuance to cinematography that I have yet to learn and appreciate, so it's a little it's a little difficult to judge <laughs> these nominees just because I've I've learned enough to know how much I don't know about cinematography, if that makes sense. Um, but I will say there was some interesting things going on with Bardo. Bardo had some really interesting things, so they're not my pick, but I'll just share that to say maybe i don't know maybe they get recognized at the awards maybe not but yeah i'll quote on the western front and uh let's go to james with james's pick <clears throat> my pick is also all quiet on the western front um also didn't see bardo also didn't see empire of light um i i don't really know why elvis or tar is nominated it seemed um I mean, Baz Luhrmann has his style and it's very like flashy and kind of like a graphic novel. Um, but I think that has more to do with, like I just joked about art production. Um, but All Quiet on the Western Front, just, you know, the battlefield and 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 just all those different war locations. Um, I, I, I agree 100% with, with uh, DJ. I don't know how anything else wins above this, even though I didn't see two of them. You know, one thing you, while you were talking, I just thought of something though, is um, I, because I was thinking about Tar, because there are some things that they did that I thought were really interesting in terms of the cinematography, um, but yeah, I, it's still not my pick, but I thought the Batman's cinematography was so cool. Like I rewatched that film just for the way it looked. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't know. There might be a reason why cinematographers don't like that film, but I thought it was so freaking awesome. Well, uh, comic book movies don't get a lot of love. Well, and they did some really cool stuff with it too, because they they um 
they shot the thing digitally, but then they print, had it printed then on film and then they rescanned the film so that it had that really distressed look. And they are oh, also right. using these specially made lenses that created a really clear focal point in the middle of the shot, but then really just like, then it really kind of distressed the, the, um, I don't know, the, the image quality as you got further from the subject to the sides. They also, and they also did stuff to make the, um, they did stuff so that when it was like, uh, what, were they, what was it? They did these things where um, like, they used almost like fog or something to show that it had just finished raining, but they did, they like, I don't, they did all these really interesting things. I, I thought it was going to be recognized. I also thought Top Gun might be recognized because part of me is like, for image capture and cinematography, like they were up in the air, putting yeah. five putting five cameras. I mean, I maybe you can just stick five cameras to anything and it's not a big deal. But like doing that and doing it properly is pretty badass. So yeah. I think that, I mean, that's more cool to me than some of this other stuff. But that's my I just want to throw that in there. Um, well said. Uh, so now I, we. I just. Oh yeah. I, Sorry, just to elaborate a little bit more on why I picked All Quiet on the Western Front and why I think it blows everything else out of the water. I mean, there are just some shots in that movie that are just, I mean, unmatched and really yeah. just like beautiful, even though the film is obviously like horrific. Uh, it's just the cinematography, I think, overall is what I walked away going like, wow, about that film. Yeah. Um. Let's keep it moving. I'm just updating my notes here. Okay, so now we're moving on to another big category, screenplay, which is split in half. So we let's start with um, best adapted screenplay. So we have All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick, and Women Talking. So I'll go first. I always think this category is so weird because someone already wrote it <laughs> no but but i don't think that's always the case though because so all quite on the western front is adapted from a novel right so that's mm -hmm. one circumstance glass onion and knives out mystery i could be wrong but i believe it's considered adapted only because they chose to this is a sequel it's a sequel. That's it's a it's not it's adapted a, from anything. That's my point. Is like it, like sometimes this category is kind of bullshit because they've done this with other films. It's a Top Gun. It's not adapted from anything. It's it's a sequel though. That's why it's considered adapted. I think they do it just to fit, just to give more credit to more writers. I I think well, and I I don't know. I think it's it's just a convoluted thing. Like. I guess they think that you have an advantage if you're use, if you're writing something based on established characters rather than starting from scratch. So like, you know, yeah. So Top Gun, the, the uh, some of those characters existed before. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so that's the. So I'm just saying this is a weird category in my opinion in general. Um, I I decided to try and judge it um, by the script and the writing. By the script. And I will say that if I'm just not thinking about what came before this screenplay, my pick is going to, oh, did I read them? I read them all. My pick is going to be All Quiet on the Western Front, because I think if it was just, like we said before, if this came out and there is nothing else attached to it with its background or history, it would just be considered the most amazing thing ever. I will say that my honorable mention is women talking because um, it, there, the script is so freaking good. It's such a women talking is actually a really good movie. Um, but that being said, you have to pick one. And I did think All Quiet on the Western Front was better. So that's going to be my pick and sort of my honorable mention. Um, did you did you watch it dubbed in English or did you have the subtitle did or were they speaking German and and you read the subtitles? Subtitles. You had uh, as you should. Yeah. As you should. <laughs> I watched um, it in Japanese with Spanish subtitles. <laughs> uh, is it my turn? Yes. <laughs> um, my pick is actually women talking. Okay. Um, 
I thought, you know, All Quiet was good. Um, It didn't really stand out to me, though. Um, And maybe it would have if I spoke German, because it's not like word for word uh, translation, uh, translation. But since I know English, I just think, um, I mean, the movie literally is women talking. But and you might think, oh, that sounds boring. Mm-hmm. But honestly, <laughs> through those conversations, I, the whole story unfolded in in basically one location and i was just like i like i was on the edge of, like on the edge of my seat with my hands in my face i was like what is going to happen next because all these conversations are really hitting it mm-hmm. i told you this yesterday but i really felt like a fly on the wall i was like these this is an actual conversation of actual women and they're actually talking and this is how it would all unfold there's no weird like oh that was a weird choice of script it's like the emotions rise and and the 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 conflict happens and then the the quote unquote right characters say the right things. It's like yep, that's totally within the character. Um, I yeah, that's my pick. Did you, so James mentioned that some people might think, oh, women talking. <laughs> That, that sounds boring. Is that, DJ, is that what you said to yourself when you actively decided not to see this movie? I hate you so much. <laughs> uh, so I, as said before, did not see the only two movies that I wanted to see that I did not get to see were Women Talking and Living. Yeah. Um. So I will not give opinions on them. Um. Though I will say, having not giving an actual opinion on it, I will say... In this category specifically, I'm sad I didn't see women talking, even just because I know the actresses that are yeah. in the film and respecting them so much that I would have been so enjoyed to see the project they all decided to do that obviously gave them great dialogue to speak to each other. I, I you know, like I I haven't seen it, but I feel like I would appreciate it for that. Yeah. Um, having said that, I I I'm not going to lie. I don't have a strong opinion of the films that I have seen for this category. Um, Part of me almost wants to just kind of say Glass Onion because I did think it was, you know, a fun film. I I thought a lot of that was because of the story. Having said that, I don't feel like it was adapted from anything. So I find it preposterous to pick it. (laughs) Um, And so for that reason, I'm going to go with All Quiet on the Western Front because it was my favorite film of the ones that I've seen within this category. And I will say this, the um, with women talking, you will, it's gonna be totally your type of film, but also you brought up the actresses in it and they are freaking awesome. It- uh, Every, I mean, I literally, I look at the poster and I'm like, yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. yes, yes. Like every person in it. And I totally get why none of them were nominated, but- because it's it's really an ensemble piece, so yeah. you could maybe I think you could maybe make the argument. We're kind of jumping ahead, but you could kind of make the argument for Rooney Mara because she, is, she's like so naturally, or she maybe it's not natural, but like she seems so natural in the film. But that's just a side note. Like yeah, they, it is a it is a good movie. Like once once it's available to stream, uh, I do recommend it, and clearly James recommends it because. You liked it. Um, I just want to say once again, I did not choose not to see it. <laughs> Honestly, if there was a movie called Men Talking, I might choose not to see it. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds like a more awful sounding movie. It does, yeah. Any any movie about blank talking is kind of like, <laughs> really? That was your... Okay. Um, let's move on. Uh, now let's go to original screenplay. Um, the nominees are the Banshees of Ed Sheeran, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Uh, James, your turn to start. Um, I saw all of these. They are all very well written, um, except the Fablemans. Um definitely not my pick i guess my top two is banshees and triangle of sadness um triangle of sadness 
that first uh, act uh, when they're fighting about um, money, uh, this couple, this young couple, I thought it was that really drew me into the movie. I was like, triangle of sadness, like, what does that even mean? Um, and then I see this this conflict and I was like, I've literally had this fight almost word for word with like my wife and like ex-girlfriends. Um, I, I thought it was like really well written. I even mentioned my wife who wasn't watching, but I was like, this is a fantastic movie. Um, it goes off in more into more of a social commentary and essay, I'll say, um, second and third act. And the script writing isn't, too punchy uh but i think that's on purpose because it's kind of like um uh kind of the people are prop pieces to tell a, a bigger story um I, i'll i'm gonna go with banshees um i i really feel this about a lot of european movies um english and and uh i irish i i suppose i've actually seen a lot of irish movies um they're very economical with their words they say a lot without talking a lot um, and I thought this script did a perfect example of that and honestly really brought out by the fantastic acting. Um, so I'm going to go with that. Banshees of Inishirin. Okay. DJ? I hope I'm saying that right. I, I think it is Inishirin. Inish well, DJ is always going to correct me if I'm wrong. So <laughs> he knows. Inishirin. Ed, Ed Sheeran. Ah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's in a Sheeran. Okay, good. Um, uh, is it, am I up? You're up. Okay, so I I think it's so interesting hearing your opinion, James, mm -hmm. because I you're allowed to disagree though. Very opposing opinion to you. <laughs> Here's what I will say, and it's it's mostly about Triangle of Sadness because I I will say I'll I'll start off by saying I actually share the same pick. I think Banshees of Inisherin is going to win it. Um, but I just want to focus more on what you said about Triangle of Sadness. Yeah. I do agree. I think that scene about who was going to pay for dinner between the couple was so interesting. After that, I thought, what is this movie? What is happening? And I thought that was entirely because of the script. I thought it was bonkers crazy. <laughs> I, I understand what they were saying. I understand what they were doing. Like, it's not that I, like, I don't want people to say, like, he didn't get it. I, I totally got it. And, like, I can even understand why someone would love the movie. But for me personally, I just, I thought the movie was wild. I uh, think we're saying the same thing then. He, he, probably. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I will say, like, that first scene was was very was very effective. No, because uh, then I, then I'm saying like it turned into like not a movie and more of just yes. like social commentary. Yes, very yeah. much. Well, yeah. like social commentary at the expense of what it was almost even. No, like. no, I agree with that. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, having said that, I think my I will say um my top two picks for this category would be Banshees of Inisherin and Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think Everything Everywhere All at Once is such. A phenomenal story you know like what it's depicting and it's it's not a story that you you see especially not celebrated at this level of like the oscars right so it's great but i will say i think the banshees of inishirin in my opinion should not have been a film it should have been a play and i think that there's actually a lot to back that up because martin mcdonough is literally a very famous playwright he has obviously written films as well but he has this is actually the third in a trilogy of plays there's the lieutenant of inishmore and the cripple of inishman and then this is actually supposed to be the third play that he started writing many years ago the banshees of inishirin and i don't know that any of them even share characters or anything but it it's like this like trilogy of like irish plays that he was writing and this i while watching this film i i just thought the whole time i just was like i wish i was seeing this on stage i don't want to see this as a film i want to see this on stage it's the plot is so simple it's so streamlined it's so exactly what it needs to be almost to a point where it's too simple for film for me i it's like it's not that it was a bad film it was a phenomenal film but I, I really wish that I could have seen it on stage because I think that it would have just like had the exact life that it meant to have. So, but having said that, I think it lends itself to me picking it for best original screenplay because I think it was the screenplay that was the shining point of this whole film for me. So my pick is The Banshees of Inishirin. All right, so my turn. So 
I'll go kind of in reverse order. Yeah, Fablemans, the screenplay did not stand out to me. Um, Triangle of Sadness, that first scene was like, oh, I get why this is nominated. After that, not interested. Um, so between Tar, Banshees of Inishirin, Everything Ever Well at Once, I thought they were all phenomenal screenplays. I'll also say that I think there's a difference between dialogue and screenplay. I believe dialogue is the most important part, typically, of a screenplay. But um, I just want to point that out because that factors into my decision because Banshees, you could argue, I think it's safe to say it has the best dialogue of those three that I'm looking at. Um, you said and, Tar, Everything Everywhere, and, and Banshees? I think Tar is really excellent. But ultimately, when I think about the journey that I go on, just if I'm if I if I imagine I was reading the screenplay and I didn't get to see the actors interpretation of things or the creative teams or anyone if I was just reading it and I thought about what would be the best journey I was taken on and just what's on paper I have to pick everything everywhere all at once I just think it's a fascinating movie and the the way protect particularly Michelle Yeoh's character and then also maybe Stephanie Sue's character but the way that those parts are written is so awesome uh can I ask sorry before you go yeah. on because just I just want to like and I'm sure people do know this because I'm pretty sure it's public but just to mention I, I don't know if this is any reason of what you're saying but I think it should be known that the role that Michelle Yeoh plays was originally meant for Jackie Chan. Right. And it was meant to be a man. And Michelle Yeoh was going to play Keith Wei Kwan's character. Oh, wow. His wife. And then um, they obviously rewrote it to adapt for different actors. Yeah. For sure. But I, I don't think that they needed to rewrite a terrible amount, really. Yeah. I mean, just like freaking A. I mean, like, obviously, I don't know, but I'm just saying. Just, I, I just think there's some. Yeah. I mean, well, to me, that's just part of the process. Every script goes through so many changes. So, but uh, that doesn't necessarily affect how I perceive it, actually. Um, but it is like a fun fact with it all. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that's my pick. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once. I just, oh, I love it so much. Uh, anyways, um, let's move on. So one of the la last things before actors, we'll, we'll go into the directors. Um, and I believe DJ is going to start us off. And the best director nominees are Martin Madonna. Or how do you, how do you say? McDonough. Do you say? McDonough. Martin McDonough. Uh, the Daniels, which I just refer to him as the Daniels, but Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiner, Shinert. How do you say it? Shiner. 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 Okay. Uh, Steven, what's his name? Spalborn. <laughs> Spalber. Uh, Todd Field and Ruben Ustland. Ustland. Uh, that seems like a Scandinavian. Is that a Swedish film? That seems like a... Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. I actually recognize that my from my Norwegian roots. Okay, so DJ, what's uh, what what are your thoughts on best director category? Um, similar to film editing, I feel I feel, and I actually don't think this one is a shoe in as much, but I feel the Daniels deserve this award for everything, everywhere, all at once. I think. Um, what do you so think? Is that your pick, or you think that like that is that is my oh, that is my okay. pick? Okay. okay. Um, I think what like I don't have one of my like what I like mostly <laughs> my, like what I think will win and what I think should win are going to be for the acting categories. Um, they deserve it, but I don't want them to have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah, we'll go get ahead. To it. Um, but no, I think the Daniels have just achieved such in, an incredible feat of directing and filmmaking with everything everywhere all at once. Um, I think you just don't see a film like this really uh very often um i think it's it's powerful it has a lot to say it's enjoyable it's entertaining it's heartbreaking it's it's just it's everything that a film should be 
Um, so for that reason, everything everywhere all at once is is my pick. I do think Steven Spielberg did a great job with the Fable Mins. I also will say if he does win, I think it's a lot of the fact of people knowing who he is and following his career and this being a film that where he's telling his own story, which I think, again, I think he did a great job. And so if he wins, I'll be very happy for him. But I think that that will be a big reason why he would win. Um, but my pick would be the Daniels. So for me, um, two films that I loved that are not nominated in this category are Avatar The Way of Water for James Cameron's direction and then Damien Chazelle's direction for Babylon. Um, I would put them in, I would, I guess, so I got to pick, take someone out if I'm going to put them in. I I would probably put them in over Ruben Usland and um, probably over Steven Spielberg. Um, just the, uh, there might be there might be some reason why technically they're considered to have done better, but in terms of my emotional reaction to the film, which I and particularly from the what I perceived to be the direction of the film, I thought that those two directors were just amazing this year and had such an impact on me. So I wish they were nominated. Uh, but well, before my, you say it, like how are we uh, judging this? It's so how do we hard. know how how do we know how they directed? That's what's so hard about it. But you know, often you could you could look to a few things. Um, number one, you know, they are the boss of all creative decisions, and so they are. I mean, they're ultimately responsible for everything. Uh, but you could also everywhere all at once. Yeah. But you could also look, I mean, you could look to the way it's shot because like the They're use telling of the cinematographer what to do. Yeah. I mean, the cinemat because cinematography has to really do with image capture, which is a reflection of the director the, of photography. They, well, that's the same thing, but that, but it, but it's, it's a, also a reflection of lighting. Uh, there's a huge aspect of cinematography, but like, you know, for Tar, for example, the way that they use those long takes where when she's in the classroom, like I would I would assume that that is probably a reflection of the director. But it's also hard to say because I'm sure the relationship is different on different films. Like on some films, you might have a director who says, we're going to have an angle right here and then it's going to cut to an angle that's looking up at them and stuff like that. And then it's the cinematographer's job to create the director's vision and figure out like okay well we need this angle lens and we have to use the, if we're using film we have to use this type so just of all so just all the choices that the movie made basically yeah all right like, it, it, it's it's a lot and it's also it's a tough category it's almost as if you're picking best picture but based on who made it Kind of. I mean, yeah, it, it's but it's also really tough because a director's impact on a film is going to be different for each film. Well, it also makes you feel like I sorry, I, I know this is going a little off topic, but it makes me think of like the year that Ben Affleck won um, best Argo. Pick with with uh, Argo, but wasn't nominated for best director. And it's just like, how how can how can you you can't nominated for best picture and then not nominate him for best director and it was just it i mean that's wild you know like but so i know so that's here's, I'll, so i'll use i'll use an example you could have a film where someone is the director and they're not making a lot of tough creative choices they might just be there and saying what do you all think okay yeah let's do that like so there's two different like that could be you know, and I've seen this like in videos with um, especially uh, for how people work with cinematographers. So a director might go to a cinematographer and say, hey, we want a shot of this car coming up over the hill and it's coming down the freeway and then we're going to follow it along. And that might be all they say. We might have another director who says, OK, I want a wide angle lens that's right up against the grill of the car and I want to shoot it in the daylight. So we're going to have to use a certain type of film and then. Uh, we're going to use a very specific style of camera movement. Like there's different things. And I think it, 
I, I'm just assuming. I think it happens. This is a good uh, example of when actors become directors. I think what they are focused on as directors is mainly what they know as actors and bringing everyone together in the cast and then being there to basically pool together the creative just decisions of everyone else and just sort of be like, yeah, I like that versus that. And I think so. It could mean that what it is to be a director could be different for every director. I I, I hope it is. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I don't I don't know if I said my pick. But I'll no, just I'll just cut to the chase. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once. Like, <clears throat> I think what they did was so incredibly creative and mind blowing. It's one of my. I mean, I already did. Yeah, I mean, I, we already did that one podcast episode where I said it was I, maybe the second most influential film that I've ever seen in my life. Just so incredible. And I am so happy that they made this film. And I think they deserve all the praise in the world. Um, and I'll just say one last thing. There is something to be said for how a film is made um, in relation to how that, like how that story is being told. So what DJ was saying before about Banshees, how like that could have been a play. And that's actually something that I, that's something that you could almost say is a negative about some films because some films, it's just like, oh, we're going to film it from the side and let them do their thing. And that can be a very uh, decisive, creative choice. But sometimes that doesn't do it for me because sometimes I'm thinking like, okay, I could see a play and see it that way. I want to see something that is specifically made for me to view it on a screen in a theater or on a TV. And I want this to be as amazing as possible so that you can't just shot for shot replicate it on stage and give me the same experience. So um, everything, every, well, every, everything everywhere all at once did that. That was incredible. They maximized the artistic medium they were using and I thought it was, they're, they were incredible. James? <laughs> um, <clears throat> now that I know the, the, the definition and what we're judging it by, uh, it's, it's, my my top two picks are Banshees and Everything Everywhere All At Once. I think both are deserving. I'm gonna zag um and go Banshees for kind of what you guys were saying. Like everything everywhere all at once is so much going on and so many creative things like costume and and, and lighting and 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 special effects going on. I think what Martin McDonough did with such a simple idea, but to still capture the attention of um, the audience, or at least me, uh, with just really simple decisions, but still powerful enough. I'll say that's great direction. But honestly, one one A and one B, everything everywhere all at once. Definitely not Fablemans. I'll say that. <laughs> all right, let's uh, let's move on. So now we're in the. Uh the more popular categories of all the actor categories and best picture. So uh, just going off of my list here in reverse order for best supporting actress, the nominees are Angela Bassett, Hong Chow, Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Stephanie Sue. So who's up? I think maybe I'm up. Um, okay. Best supporting actress. This one was a tough one for me. I feel like I'm going to start giving very political answers because I feel like for all the acting categories, all a four, choice for one does not mean you hate the others. No, I know that. I'm not a. I'm, <laughs> listen, they're all. All these people are doing just fine. It doesn't matter if I said, "Oh, you know, I wasn't feeling it." I don't feel like I'm putting out anything negative into the. Even Steven Spielberg, like, yeah. Well, don't, were, then don't worry about political like, answers. No, no, no. I'm I'm not saying political for the sake of saving my ass or like uh. I'm going to get canceled or something. I'm saying it's political because I'm going to give two answers for each of them. And, I'll, and I'm going to explain it. Oh, yeah. No, I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick. I'm going to I'm going to say I feel the same way, John. 
let me just say what I want to say and then <laughs> comment on it. How about that? All right. You're the one who's, who preambled it. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to say. I think that when it comes to acting, sometimes you could say, oh, this person was the most in tune with their character. And some people could say that that is what it means to be an actor. I think that the reaction that you get from it is m the most important thing. And so for one example could be, um, uh, well, actually the best example I'll bring up is sort of, um, we were talking about Jurassic Park for Schindler's List yesterday and how yes. like they came out in the same year. This isn't about acting, but Schindler's List is considered <laughs> the better film at the time it won all the awards but jurassic park i think like that i mean that is maybe one of the greatest movies ever created and even though it wasn't viewed that way at the time when it was winning when it was oscar season it's i think a popcorn it's popcorn film well that's mm -hmm. how people view it but i also think it's the most amazing film like ever it's so cool and oh, yeah. I guess to give a better example that's more specific to actors, I think I always think about like um, like Robin Williams in Good Morning Vietnam, where, you know, he's nominated, but he doesn't win. And I, I should have the information about who he was nominated against. But like a role like that, people probably perceive it as like, oh, well, he's a comedian. Like that's a performance. That's not acting or something like that. But you know what? he's the person on screen he's the one doing the role and like that's what spoke to me the most and i i think that that counts for something and so these are i will also say i'm sorry just because we're on the subject yeah um and i've talked to you john about this personally yeah. um but also i think it's also a lot about who gets the most press yeah, well, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm thinking about, I'm just also, I, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole for other sure. thing. For sure. And I, well, so I guess I can save my opinion for when we get to that. So let me just, let me just start saying some names because, uh, and I'll give you a clear example of what I'm talking about. So for Best Supporting Actress, as I was going through these things, I really liked Carrie Condon. Am I saying her name right, DJ? I, I think so. so. Uh, her performance in The Banshees of Inishirin, she was just such a, so good. Like she's just such a breath of fresh air on screen. She did such a great job of being a supporting character in terms of adding to the main stuff going on. And I think, but she just won the BAFTA. And I, I think if she was to win, like I can't, I can't really argue that she isn't maybe the best technical actress. Like she was so freaking good, but the actress who blew me away in this category, who was technically amazing, but also just had that something else, I don't know what to say, is Hong Chow in The Whale. She blew, like, I was just, she got me rubbed up and I was just like, she was so cool and she had these great moments and the way that she was interacting with um, the main character just added so much to the film and like she might be my favorite performance of the year for any actor and i loved her and um i think she was and this is a good example because i think she actually is technically still an excellent actor but this is a good example of how the tiebreaker is the emotion behind w what i experienced and so that i know i Took a long time to explain that, but that's why it's gonna this these categories get really difficult for me. But Hong Chow, without a doubt, amazing and maybe my favorite. Perf oh, and I think at the end we we should all pick our favorite actor, like not not man or woman lead supporting. I think we should we should make some picks and say who was the one that that really put you over the edge. Um, and she might be it for me, but she was such a standout. Um, James, how about you? <clears throat> uh, I'm going Carrie Condon, uh, Banshees, uh, Banshees of Inisherin. I thought she really captured um, the simple life of an off island, of off the mainland um, character. Just um, you know, 
that I think is hard for, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, who did the hardest job, but I just say, I totally believed she was this, this just farm girl living on uh, out in the middle of nowhere and in this small society and with kind of small society goals and past and future. And um, I, I just thought she nailed it really added to the story and that, you know, just complimented um, the other actors and um, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Nailed it. I haven't seen the whale, but um, I'm excited to based on what you just said. All right. DJ. Okay. So I have a lot to say. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, so first of all, I just want to say before I say anything, I think that you can make an argument for any one of these actresses to actually win. Right. I, I really do. Having said that, this is going to be one of the the categories where I have a difference between who I believe will win. Five answers. <laughs> so I'll start out with who I believe will win, which is Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And that is based solely on the fact that she has won every award besides the BAFTA because Carrie Condon win, did win that. I'm actually not even sure if Angela was nominated. I'm assuming she was. Um, I think she was. But you know, so Angela Bassett, I, I, I feel at this point she's a shoe in to win. I don't like. I love Angela Bassett as an actress. I think that is kind of ridiculous, only because it's a Marvel film. You know, it's it's not to say that she's not giving in a great a performance in the movie because she is. So just let's put that aside. So that's who I. That is literally who I believe will win. Now. I'm I'm going to go through a ranking system of who I think should win because again I honestly think any of these actresses could but I will tell you who I I'm going to go from the bottom to the top okay in my bottom and this is someone who I feel like a lot of people think could win I'm going to put Jamie Lee Curtis and the only reason that I'm putting her at the bottom is because I believe while she is giving a great performance the writing is not there for this character for this to be an Oscar winning role. In, mm -hmm. in my opinion, the, the writing is not there. Jamie Lee Curtis's performance is great. Everything, it, it's nothing to do with her. It, it's just sometimes the writing is what wins you a role, a, 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 a trophy and, and the writing is not there for this role in my opinion. Uh, one level up from her, I would put Angela Bassett. Um, then after that, I would put um, Carrie Condon uh, for the Banshees of Anna Sharon. For, and it's more to say about the other two actresses than it is about her because I think she is giving a phenomenal performance in this movie. But again, it's like I almost I'm like I put her on stage and have her win a Tony because like yeah. it, she, she it's it, it's it's the movie is a play to me and I just, I just can't get that out of my head. So she's giving a phenomenal performance. I have nothing bad to say about her performance. Now the first and second spot. It's it's. I mean, it's. Just, I feel very passionate about this. I love both of these actresses so much, and I'm not gonna lie. I might be a little bit biased. So my my second place is gonna go to Hong Chow for the whale, and the reason is I will say I've been a big fan of Hong Chow for a number of years, ever since I saw the film Downsizing, where she was nominated for a Golden Globe for her award. She played a Vietnamese woman. Um, and she was just incredible. And then she was in the TV show Homecoming, the second. I mean, she was in the first season, but very briefly, but she had a leading role in the second season. And I just think Hong Chao is just a phenomenal actress in general. And yes, her performance in The Whale is outstanding. I, I don't understand how other people are not like dancing in the streets for how good she is. <laughs> She's just so good. It's like she really is. Um, but having said that, my personal favorite performance, and again, if we're going to be giving favorite yeah. performance of the whole year, is Stephanie Sue in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Call me crazy. I <laughs> think that she is the emotional core of Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think her performance is incredible. I've also seen on, I don't know if it was on YouTube or on Instagram, I saw a video of her audition, like a filmed audition of her going for this role. And it's just... I just think 
there's so many elements to it. There, there's not a lot of roles where a performer like this will be able to be featured. And that's that's true about Michelle Yeoh as well. But just going with Stephanie, because she comes from the background of musical theater, which I do myself, and still like to have this opportunity. It's just such a big deal. I think her attack of this role is so unbelievably incredible. I think the writing is there for this role. Um, and then on top of that, I think she as a performer took this role and 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 did literally more than everything right. I think she is so incredible. I think she deserves this award so much. I do not believe she will get it. And because so, she was not nominated for other big awards in this category, which is crazy to me because she is my favorite performer of the whole season. But um, but yeah, so overall to recap, my pick <laughs> is Stephanie Sue for everything ever all at once for actress in a supporting role. Um, I will just point out one thing that I you made me think about. Um, there were two performances that I thought were going to, well, two that I thought could have been nominated. Um, uh, I thought Kiki Palmer in Nope was actually pretty damn good. I could not and agree with Yeah, I also think that you could make an, you could maybe make an argument for, Rooney Mara in Woman Talking. Um, and I would probably put them in over Angela Bassett and Jamie Lee Curtis. That I'm just gonna throw that out there because I I mean they were so good. And in hindsight, I mean, hey, everyone can these nominations, whatever. Everyone has a different opinion, but I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that those roles stood out to me. Um, any other last thoughts about Best Supporting Actress before I move on? I just want Stephanie Sue to win so bad and she's not going to. Um, I feel the, I have the most passion about this, this <laughs> specifically. Um, I do too. If God, if Hong Chow loses to anyone other than Carrie Condon, then I just will probably have no faith in the Oscars. I'll just say that. I'm I'm telling you right now, Angela Bassett will walk away with the award. Yeah, uh, well, all right. I'm not uh, saying I want that to be true. I'm saying it will happen. Uh, and I'm not, it, it's sure. kind of similar to like the Leo, the Leo. It, it's similar, not as the same situation, but it's similar to the 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 discussion we had earlier about Leo DiCaprio, where it's like Angela Bassett. Yeah, she makes sense in my mind as an Oscar-winning actress, but for this film, I that just I don't know. <sighs> Yeah, I'm I'm not gonna be a hater, but yeah, I I I I just didn't see it. I mean, and yeah, it's 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 I really I hate saying that because I feel like I'm being a hater towards her, but it's also like, no, it's just this was not a top like this was a mid-level Marvel film. And like and sorry, but like I thought the performance was kind of like in like it was within that. Like it, you know, it's like your your performance can be hurt by the movie you're in and i'm sure it's like everything has an effect on it but uh i mean if she i don't know maybe and i'm that's just my opinion maybe everyone else loved it so if she if she does win good for her i mean but it's hong chow like it's also crazy to me because like you i'm very i i just was astounded by hong chow and carrie condon and like and the, i will say fully for myself i might be biased to the fact that like I already was like on the Hong Chow train of like being like, she's incredible. She will get her time. She's so good. How is this just the first time people are, are, are seeing her? Because I've already kind of been on the train of like, she's so incredible. So I will say that might also be biasing my opinion of why she's not my actual number one pick. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I feel like I had something else to say here. Now I can't remember what it was. Well, but, um, oh, oh, I will say when Sue <laughs> was not nominated for the Golden Globe, yeah, I lost my shit. Well, the Golden Globe lost not, yeah. my shit when Stephanie Sue was not nominated for the Golden Globe. I I think my impression of the Golden Globes is it is an elbow rubbing event. It's like, and as far as I know, Stephanie Sue is not a Hollywood insider, you know, I think they, I don't know who she supposedly got had was someone else was picked over her 
picked um why why she wasn't picked like who took her her place so to speak but let me look at I, I just don't I don't give I, I think the Golden Globes are fun but I don't think of it as like the end-all be-all so if someone doesn't get nominated for that I'm not it's like okay yeah you know the tourist was nominated that one year for best comedy which was <laughs> a terrible movie I you didn't know? Them. but I sorry I just I need to like look at like who the nominees were for best yeah so look it up for Golden Globe. for the Golden Globes uh oh another great supporting actress was okay you know what the, I the woman say, wait was... let me just say this Another great actress, supporting actress, the woman in Triangle of Sadness. She was really good. Dolly De, Le De, De Leon, who she was nominated for the Golden Globe, along with Carey Mulligan, um, because the nominees for the Golden Globes were Angela Bassett, Carey Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, Dolly De, Dolly De Leon, Carey Mulligan. Both Hong Chow and Stephanie Sue were not <laughs> nominated. What is going on? What is going on? That's what I'm getting at with. Got to be an A-lister. You got that. That's what oh, I'm saying. That should be an A-lister. I understand Stephanie Sue not being one, but Hong Chow has never given a bad performance in her career. Yeah. Oh, and that's just... why, that's why like a Marvel movie and Hot Dog Fingers beat them out. Like, <laughs> it's just like, no. Well, no. Hong Chao was nominated for a Golden Globe for downsizing a number of years ago, which was like kind of played off as like this, like nothing Matt Damon comedy, but it was actually like a film that had a lot to say. And she was literally nominated for Best Supporting Actress in that film, but then not nominated for an Oscar that year. So it's, you just never know what's, it's like sometimes the Golden Globes like to pick the ones from obscurity, but sometimes yeah. they don't, right? I don't know. Let's keep it moving. Best Supporting Actor. Uh, we have, uh, and help me with these names, we got Brendan Gleeson from Banshees of Inishirin. We have Brian Tyree Henry from Causeway, Judd Hirsch from The Fablemans, Barry Keoghan. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, Logan, but I don't know. I honestly. So Barry from Banshees of Inishirin and he, oh, what is it? Ki Hui Juan. Ki Hui Juan. Uh, from everything everywhere all at once so the guys from banshees which is which again which is the young guy is that barry or barry Brent? that's barry okay yeah, no brendan gleason is mad eye moody from harry potter series yeah. okay <clears throat> so we're starting this category with james i believe oh how is judd hirsch nominated for fail women's he was in like two minutes of that movie um <laughs> my pick i'm sticking with with banshees um, I'm actually going to go Barry though. Uh, I thought he his role was had a little more nuance to it versus Brendan Gleeson's. Um, and God, I mean, he plays like mentally challenged, and that's such a hard thing to pull off. But I thought he did it really well. Um, everyone and everywhere has seen that scene with um, uh, uh, Carrie Condon on all over the internet just absolutely heart-wrenching um wait that the is, role is mentally challenged yeah i thought he was just like i honestly thought he was just like an awkward guy i didn't think he was well plus his dad was like Homer's constantly just so raping good him. john oh okay well no it's just news to me but anyways but yeah didn't mean to care. um yeah, I, and again, just adding to the simple life of 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 island person, um, nailed it. Uh, a totally, a uh, hundred percent commitment to the character, without being like like cartoonish. I'll say. Yeah. Okay, so we got Barry, and DJ. Um. So I am gonna share the sentiment. How was Judd Hirsch nominated? <laughs> fantastic but he was also on screen for two minutes um i i don't know that this is necessarily one where i'm going to say who i think will win who i think should win because i'm pretty sure i know who is going to win who i think is going to win is ki hui kwan for everything everywhere all at once i think it is all but sealed up no one else is going to win this award but him and if i'm being honest about who i think should win i do think it's him Having said that, <laughs> I was, no, but like I just but I also don't I'm not think saying it that this him. other person <laughs> should win, but I just want to mention that Brian Tyree Henry and Causeway 
was so good in like such an understated role. I'm just happy he got the nomination because I think that he, I think it's a movie that maybe a lot of people, like it's the only nomination for that film across the board, right? And like when I watched that film, which was uh, at that point specifically to watch his performance because it wasn't nominated for anything, it was another one similar to All Quiet on the Western Front where I was not, really excited to watch it I wasn't looking forward to it I wasn't expecting to enjoy it and I walked away going like wow that was that was a really good film like that that movie like affected me like I I really enjoyed it and his performance Mm -hmm. it's it's not the showy kind of performance where like he's you know crying the whole time or doing anything he does have a like a somewhat dramatic moment but overall he's just playing a real person and I so appreciated that so I just want to like give an honorable mention to him because I think I, I and again just say that I'm very happy he was nominated and getting that kind of recognition because I I think he's a wonderful actor in general and I really enjoyed his performance in this film but I will say my personal pick would be Ki Hui Kwan for everything, everywhere, all at once. Uh, Cause he is phenomenal in that movie. Um, in short, for me, it comes down oh, to- Oh, your, your audio went out, oh. John. Can you hear me now? Hello? Can't hear you. What? Can't hear me? We cannot hear you. I How guess me now? and DJ will uh, continue on with the uh, show. Uh... Wait, can you hear me? Oh, oh, there you oh, are. Now we can, yeah. You can hear me now? All right. Yeah. Weird. Um, I'll oh, because my something with my internet. Okay, just let me know if it happens again. Um, so it comes down to Barry from Banshees and Ki Hui Huan. Ki Hui Quan from Everything Everywhere All at Once. And uh, this is tough because I think you could I think you could make an argument that Barry gave a better like technical performance but and i don't know if this is the work of the directors or the work of the actor but the the part that really stood out with me was ki hui Quan. i can't even say his name ki hui Quan. um he and i think you know part of the advantage he has is the variety of characters he basically plays and there's just so much variety of what is commanded from him. And, but it also doesn't overshadow the journey that he is on in that film and how it affects Michelle Yeoh's character. And I just think he is, I think it was amazing. I, I, he's the, he's got the performance that stands out to me, but it's, it's a coin flip between those two. And so I'm just going with, you know, who, who stood out to me uh, when I watched the film. But uh, that that's, a t- I don't want to, I don't want to think about that one too much because I think Barry might be deserving. Anyways, so anyways, moving on. Best lead actress, we got Kate Blanchett, Anna Darmus, um, on- Andrea or Andrea? Andrea Riseborough, Michelle Williams. Know. Uh-huh. And Michelle Yeoh. So, uh, James, we're starting with you. I want to talk a little bit about Kate Blanchett's character. Uh, I went into Tar not knowing anything um, about the movie. I didn't see any previews or anything. Um, and the first act, I'll say, I I even texted my mom. I was like, Kate Blanchett is 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 playing really like phony. It sounds like she she's like ah, a composer would talk like this. Um, and then you realize at the end, it's like, oh, yeah, her character is kind of full of shit. Um, and she is nailing this role. Um, I was like, oh, wow. And and I, I the, the whole movie itself is, is like a really like uncomfortable watch. And, and, and you just feel like kind of like your skin is crawling. Um, I thought she did really well in it. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a line from DJ. Having said that, um, I'm going to go with uh, Michelle Yeoh's character and everything all everywhere all at once. Um, just superstar role, uh, but but classical trained actress. Um, I, I thought she just nailed it. It's such a hard, unique role to play. Um, 
And that is my pick for best actress. Nice. DJ. I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go for a little bit again. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Everyone hang on to your seats. Here we there's, go. There's so much to say about this category. I think the first thing I want to talk about is Anna Diarmas and Blonde. <laughs> because what? what is this nomination? <laughs> I'm sorry. Before I say anything, let me just say, Anna Diarmas is a wonderful actress. I am not trying to discount her as an actress because I think she is wonderful. I think she has a very good command of her emotions. I think that she creates characters very well. Having said that, <laughs> in the movie Blonde, she is playing a real person that actually existed who was not Cuban. So... Uh. When, when you're playing Marilyn Monroe, but you can't do the correct accent, I'm sorry. It completely just yoinks me right out of it, right there. So, and then on top of that, and this again is not her fault. So that is her fault. That I'm not going to lie. That, that <laughs> is her fault. But on top of that, which is not her fault, is that that movie was bonkers wild fucking crazy. Like that movie is not what happened to Marilyn Monroe. Like straight, just straight up, that movie is wrong. And so uh, for that reason also, like just the writing, I'm like, the writing is not there for anyone to win an award for this. But so right away, I'm just like, how was she nominated? The fact that she was nominated for this, but also worst actress at the Razzies, that is very- she wasn't nominated for worst actress. I looked it up. I heard that she was. The film was nominated for worst picture, for worst That's film. Correct. Um, I don't. Okay, whatever. I I heard that she was nominated for best actress or for worst actress, and I believed it. I think that that says enough. Um, again, I don't want to say that I think she's a bad actress because I do not. I think the the emotions that she portrayed in the film were amazing, but overall, I was like, what is going on? This is wild. She is Cuban, and she did not know how to like she she was not able to create the correct dialect that Marilyn Monroe spoke in you could clearly hear her Cuban dialect and unfortunately that right away is just like you do not deserve an academy award so I will I just want to say that um okay moving on uh Michelle Williams and the Fablemans wonderful performance I'm putting it away after that after having said that <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> wonderful i have nothing bad to say about it but that's all i have to say compared to the other three actresses in this category which i have a lot to say so okay this is going to be another one where we have who i think will win and who i think should win who i think will win and i'll, I'll take this moment to talk about this performance is michelle yo and everything everywhere all at once i think she will win i hope she wins I think it will be a very monumental win. Um, I think her performance in the film is wonderful. I so think you don't want I, your favorite actor to win. You well, hope to. <laughs> let me speak my truth. So uh, I and again I said this is okay. I guess I shouldn't say I hope this is who will win. I think this is who will win, and I think this is who is is one of the deserving people to win. Okay, okay. let's put it that way. Okay. Um, Michelle Yeoh is wonderful in this film. She is giving an incredible performance. It's it would also be a career Oscar. We've all loved Michelle Yeoh for many years in films. Um, also on top of that, to go back to what I was saying about film editing, um, how it go jumps from like you know different universe to different universe. As much as that is, um, you know uh an accolade to give to the film editing it is also an accolade to give to her acting because uh, they filmed those sequences completely at different times like there's no way around it but you completely believe she is in the exact same mindset she is in at every different universe even though they were filmed like super away from each other you know what i mean and while that seems like such like a like a normal thing to think like yeah of course you know she's in that mind like like in that moment that is where she is in the story as an actor that is not easy to do and it's one of those things that like you don't realize how hard that is to do right like to be in a moment in one place but then think you're three months later and you're now filming again and all of a sudden you have to go back to that exact 
like mental moment of being like, okay, this is what I was doing. You're in a different costume. You're in a different setting, but you're in the exact same moment like that. It it really is very impressive. Like I, I, I have to say it, she gave a very impressive performance. I think it's, it's impressive in ways that people don't even realize. So for that, I will, I want to say, I, I, I completely respect the fact that Michelle, Michelle Yeoh is most likely going to win this award. And I'm happy about it. Having said that, I would like to talk about Andrea Riseborough and to Leslie and Kate Blanchett and Tar because I think that they are also giving two of the best performances of the year. I'm going to talk about Andrea Riseborough first because I've actually said to John in a private conversation that she would actually probably be my pick to win. Um, and I think that, that that opinion has changed. I think I've gone back to play Kate Blanchett, but Andrea Riseborough into Leslie is giving the kind of performance that any other year and without the controversy surrounding it, which I don't know if we want to get into or not, but we can if we want to, whatever. What happened? Sorry? What happened? Oh, you didn't know? No. Is there, is it, well, there was controversy because the film is incredibly small indie film. Literally, uh, it made $27,000 in its release. So wow. they basically what happened was they made the film and then the director is married and the, um, the producers Mary. they went ahead and since they knew people in the industry they emailed or messaged all their friends in the industry and said hey can you post on social media during the voting time for the oscars can you just blast out to all the social media that people should can watch this film and consider it. And uh, so people, there was controversy over whether or not they violated the rules of like trying to coerce Oscar voters, basically. Oh, wow. Okay. And they, yeah. uh, from their point of view, it's like, we had no money. And so we asked our friends, hey, can you spread the word? That, you know, yeah, yeah. and in the end, um, in the end, they, you know, the Oscar nomination stood. Mm -hmm. so, they were okay. and, you know all of that aside Andrea Riseborough's performance in that movie I understand there's a controversy regardless of if she wins or not if she's my pick if she's your pick if she's anyone's pick that performance deserves to be seen because she is incredible in that movie like she's playing you know she's playing this like down and out kind of white trash uh, drunk you know southern woman who just loses everything and is like putting her life back together and i and, and not to mention this is a british actress you know she's she's really she's giving it a really incredible performance when i saw the movie when i walked like i walked walked out i saw the movie in my home but um <laughs> but, but like i like you know after the film was over i literally walked away thinking i think she would be my pick and I had seen all the other movies at this point, but I was literally thinking, I was like, I think she gave the best performance. But I think I've gone back to believing that Cate Blanchett, for me, is giving the most effective performance in Tar. I, In my opinion, that entire movie centers around her performance. I know for a fact it was written for her. I think Cate Blanchett is just a force of nature in general. I think her performance in Blue Jasmine, which she won her second Oscar for, is one of the best performances in a film I have literally ever seen. So I don't know if I'm just like biased in that sense, but I, she she just plays roles with such a ferocity that like no one else can bring to the camera. And um, no, so I agree. She is. I felt like stunned after after the like watching i was like what did i just see like i went on a ride right there and yeah oh, she's yeah. the driving force of it fully and so you know that's why i say i'm like who i think will win and who i'm happy to have take home the award is michelle yo but again to go back to what i said at the very, very beginning if you put people in front of screens and they knew nothing about these people's careers they knew nothing about what was going on they just saw performance I think they would pick Kate Blanchett. Giddy up. <clears throat> My turn. Uh, for me, yeah, you, for me, this all comes down to three actresses. It's Kate, 
Andrea or Andrea, I think it's Andrea, um, and Michelle. Uh, those are the three. And which Michelle? Yo, got it. Williams. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> what will I say? I think I would probably, from that point, narrow it down to Andrea and Michelle Yo. Um, you know, Kate Blanchett is amazing. Um, but she also won the award twice, and that I, politically, that is important. Well, I'm I'm not talking about who I think is going to win because I have no idea who's going to win. Sure, and I don't care how many times anyone's won an award. Uh, it just there was there was a point where uh, the film was amazing and she did a great job, but I also felt like this might be one of those movies that is really big during award season and then it's kind of over. Like <laughs> that, that was kind of my takeaway. It was like, okay, that was great. I don't need to watch it again. Mm -hmm. Um, and so maybe that's just how I connected with it, but I would remove that. Um, I think just in terms of a technical performance, I liked um, to Leslie better. Um, I just connected a little bit more emotionally with the character and maybe, and again, this the, directors have an impact on this. What you see from the character is th through the metaphorical lens of the director. Um, and, um, but anyways, it's Michelle Yeoh. I mean, what a cool and it's part of it is the part and you know as we've talked about how much each actor in this movie got to you know how much they got to show because they their characters go through so many things um but you know i was talking to one person about these different characters and they were like Oh, Kate Blanchett was more of an anti-hero and Michelle Yeoh was more of a hero and i would say no, that's the brilliance of everything everywhere all at once. When Michelle Yeoh's character starts off, she is this mother who doesn't support her gay daughter. Then when she's introduced to the multiverse, the first thing she tells her husband is that I saw my life without you and I was so much happier. Like she's kind of a bitch, <laughs> you know? She's not a good person and she's so flawed and she's she has like she has this dark side that we all have and that's the brilliance of her performance in the character is that by the end she like it's not Stephanie Sue who's the heart of the show or the movie it is Michelle Yeoh and on top of that the fact that she's kind of doing this whole existential nihilist journey and is able to be the heartbeat of this movie that shows how valuable life can be regardless of a lack of meaning. I, and also the fact that we haven't talked about the fact that these actors did all these like martial arts and stuff, like, and everyone's like, oh yeah, anyone else could have done that. No, like they fucking killed it. I mean, like I, she, she was so good and she's, she might be the one, the one person I think about the most when I think about actors this year. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I'm just going to, we've talked on this category a lot. So I'm just going to say Michelle Yeoh and amazing, amazing. Um, and let's wrap this up. Let's get to lead actor. Best lead actor. We have Austin Butler for Elvis, Colin Farrell for the Banshees of Inishirin, Brendan Fraser for the whale, Paul Mescal for after Sun, and Bill Nye for living did i say all those names right i think so i think it's paul muscle but yeah okay so whose turn is it is it my turn or james's turn i think, I think well, it's james uh... went first like the last two categories yeah. oh okay so then it's you dj okay um so once again i'm gonna have who i think will win who i think should win who i think will win brendan frazier for the whale and I'm happy with it. I think he gave a wonderful performance in the film. I think the film is a depression bomb. Um, I think it is like fully, if you're in any kind of a dark place in your life, the film will bring out whatever is going on with you. 
And part of that is Brendan Fraser's performance. He's really, really doing well. He's also an actor that we all trust in a way as, as an audience because we're used to seeing him in roles like George of the Jungle and in The Mummy and in one of my personal favorites, Bedazzled, right? Like we, you know, you just trust him. And so then to see him in such this dramatic role with wonderful makeup, not costuming, well, costuming too, but makeup, um, you know, as this like very, very overweight man, you just, you tr you trust him and uh, he's giving a really wonderful performance. So I'm very happy with the fact that I believe he will win this award. Having said that, who I think is giving the best performance of the year is Paul Meskel in After Sun. Uh, I think this is a movie that people, I, oh, also I should mention, I did not see Living. I did not see Living. So this is discounting Bill Nye completely. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I think After Sun is a film that people did not see. Mm -hmm. I think it was a very small film. Um, this film is wonderful. It is heartbreaking. It is, it is, it's, it's the kind of film where on first watch, you feel like nothing is, is happening. And then the more you think about it after you watch the ending, it just will like twist your heart and like want to rip it into like over and over and over again. And Paul, I think I just, I think Paul Meskel is giving such a good performance. I also think in general, this is the beginning of someone's career. And it's not even the beginning of his career. He's already been around for a while, but I think it's the kind of performance where people are going to be watching out for what he does for years to come because he is so freaking good in that movie. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I'll go. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, this was an interesting category. Um, I did, I did see living. I thought Bill Nye was, he was good. Uh, but, um, I'll say Paul for after sun, maybe, maybe the better technical performance, but the one that got me, the one that got me to the core was Brendan Fraser. And again, that might be, there There could be a number of factors why, but I, he was the one that stood out the most. Um, there, his part, there are things about his role that I think some people, I've seen some people comment about how simple it might appear on the surface but there were some really powerful things about it that I loved. And I think the way he, the whole journey you go on with that character is so awesome. And it's more than just like a guy who's putting on weight and changing his body and then putting on a fat suit and all that. Like it's that, that doesn't play into my thinking at all when it comes to his performance. Um, just side note after sun i believe for, there's a i don't know what it is it's an organization or a publication or something called sight and sound and it's like i believe it's filmmakers or directors who vote every year on their favorite films and after sun was like the number one film and it's an international organization uh so i think it it is an interesting film just to put it out there um, I think it's worth watching. It really snuck up on me when it when when I was watching it. I was, I was I remember starting out thinking like nothing's going on, and then by the end of it, it was just like, whoa, okay, ah, okay, and and um, but so I just want to point that out. But yeah, Brendan Fraser, he's my pick. James, how about you? Didn't see three of these. <laughs> didn't see living after sun or the whale so i'm just gonna go i think i'm quadrupling down now on colin farrell banshees of inishirin nice. <clears throat> again such a simple role but he really takes you on the roller coaster of emotions i thought the audience i totally empathize with him the entire way i'm rooting for him so much uh i thought he went through all this basically stages of grief um th through this this ordeal um uh some scenes that stuck out to me is uh 
you know, he gets angry at him when he finds out that, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Brendan Gleeson's character is just like, oh, you want to write, you you just want to write a song. And he's like, he's like, yeah, I wrote this and I'm going to write the other one tomorrow. And then he like grabs his drink. He's like, well, it's a shite song anyway. <laughs> that was so like, just exactly what someone would say out of anger when they find out. I was like, well, you want to be my friend? Um, I had an acting teacher once tell me that the only difference between a best friend and a spouse is that you don't have sex with them. So like you really feel Colin Farrell is literally like in love with Brendan Gleeson's character. He's like, this is my, my other half here. Um, and, and, and just the confusion and the, the, the frustration uh, and and the hope that he has and then it just gets pounded right in the chest um, um, when he doesn't show up for drinks um, and then when his donkey chokes on the finger and dies and he's that. like crying because again like that's his life like he takes care of these animals um, and then he snaps back into the rage and then you know obviously spoiler alert he he's like i'm gonna burn down your fucking house and i hope you're you you better be in it or 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 not but that's what's gonna happen and obviously at the end he or he saw that he was in the house but he got out and and they're on the beach and kind of what i was saying with the script writing there's so much to be said in such little text when um brendan gleason's character is like thanks for looking out for my dog and the last line is just him saying anytime and obviously better acting than I just did. But it's just like that whole thing is just like, no matter what you do, how far you push me away, I'm always going to love you and be your best friend. And tomorrow, you know, he's just going to wake up and try again. I thought it was so powerful. Um, I I can't say more. I'm I'm all in on Colin Farrell. This guy is like was a supposedly a, this rock star like actor actor is good looking like give him all the actor action roles and now he's playing this like in like s- kind of independent film style and i thought he nailed it uh all in on, on uh on colin farrell banshees having said that i haven't seen <laughs> three of the <laughs> three, three of the nominees here so i'll take that with a grain of salt sounds good um here we go final category best picture so um <clears throat> We have All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, Women Talking. Um, uh, it's my turn to go first. So I will start by saying there were four movies for 2022 that got like there were four that stood out above the rest and they were everything everywhere all at once um babylon the whale and avatar the way of water and i'll i forgot to mention when i was thinking about best directors i would strongly i I don't know if i would put them over todd field but i i might take darren afrodsky over uh Todd Field for um his direction for the whale. Um the but those four movies, so obviously I'm going to be picking from one of those. Uh, I'm not gonna t- I will say that some of these were really cool though. Like Top Gun Maverick was a great <laughs> they it just they nailed it. And women talking women talking was up there all quiet on the western front was up there. Anyways, let me focus on you know, Babylon, I wish was nominated, although I kind of understand why it wasn't. Um, Avatar, The Way of Water, I don't think is the best picture, but I think of it in a different way for more of the technical uh, innovation. Um, and also, I'll say this about Avatar, because I haven't said it yet. Um, the The thing that people don't seem to appreciate about James Cameron and what is really important and just smart as a business person is making an experience for people. It's not just like a film, but making an experience for people that they can't get anywhere else, like something that is truly unique. And 
that's what he did with Titanic. It was also a different time where you couldn't watch it on your TV, but it was just such a grand monumental movie that that's why people were going to see it 10, 20 times when it came out. And it was at one point, the highest grossing film of all time. The same thing can be said in a way of Avatar The Way of Water, which is whether you like it or not, it was designed specifically to be seen in a movie theater in 3D on the biggest screen you could see it on because that that's what it was made for. It was made to be immersive. It was made for you to feel like you're looking at a world's biggest aquarium. And I think it's such a, un, like it's, so unappreciated to when people do that because so many of these movies you could just watch on a laptop and it wouldn't take away that much from the experience but i think there's something really to be said about what james cameron did for the way of water um side note i liked the whale with they had a i believe it was a four by three aspect ratio which is just a film nerd thing but my pick Everything Everywhere All at Once, it's no surprise. It's one of my favorite movies ever. I think it was just so inventive, so well done. Yeah, I, I could talk forever about it, but that's my pick. James? <clears throat> I am going to talk forever because I, I want to talk about, this is what I thought the podcast was going to be, just talking about the best picture movies. Yeah. Um, is that okay? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. Um. I split these up into tiers, tier one movies, tier two movies, and tier three movies. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom up. My tier three movies are Fablemans, Avatar, and Elvis. Fablemans, I think if this was made by anyone other than Steven Spielberg, it'd be a straight-to-TV lifetime movie. I think that this is Steven Spielberg saying, hey, even though I'm this rich, successful guy, I I had a rough life, so <laughs> I have street cred. Um, <laughs> I I I think I get that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> like oh, I, I was bullied as a kid, and and my parents got a divorce, so feel bad for me. I thought his character was could be easily ripped off from Marty McFly's dad in um, uh, Back to the Future. It's like, okay, obviously a bully. Like, <laughs> I'm going to beat you up. And I cheat on my girlfriend. And you better better not find out. I thought all the emotions were totally manufactured, not earned at all. Um, I felt insulted by uh, by <laughs> watching this. I was like, how how is this nominated? Um, Avatar. I've changed my stance on this based on this podcast alone. I get what you're saying. Totally. Technically, one of the most original and craziest thing I've ever seen. I wish they took maybe $5 million from that technical budget and put it into the script writing. Um, I thought the story was so basic and just like an excuse. And maybe they, maybe this is true, but maybe it's just an excuse to see all this crazy stuff. Like, okay, bad guy is trying to get good guy and we forget that world we did in the in the first one we're going to get you to this new world even though the script is the plot is the exact same as the original so i thought it was just an excuse to like sell new action figures maybe or or like just like we had such a connection with the original world and just like all right first five minutes we're gonna take you somewhere else and just again, the script writing, some some lines here that I wrote down in the movie theater <clears throat> when uh, the girl, when the daughter is sleeping and she has these like magical powers and then spider comes up and and the and then she wakes up and she he's looking at her all weird. Nobby Jesus, I call her. Yeah. And, and she goes, huh, I was doing that thing again, wasn't I? I was like, OK, well, this is obviously going to come up later. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Um, when they meet the new kids in the water world, I like, it's so cringeworthy. Like, look at their, where are their tails? They can't swim. (laughs) Um, and then like, I guess they make some kind of connection. It's like, we should be friends. It's like, okay. (laughs) Again, just really 
They couldn't hire some some writer to just punch, make it a little more punchy. The bad guys, like I guess there's this the obviously the main bad guy, but then like they, they just threw in this like team of whalers out of nowhere, and it's like literally the same thing. It's like instead of instead of the unobtainium, the reason they're they're going after these whales, it's like this brain juice that, and the way they said it, it's like this thing just stops aging. It just stops it and it goes for 80 million dollars it's like okay we get it we're you're we're so awful like we should feel bad for the navi people um and then when they're hunting like the the shooters like they get the hit and the girls are just like oh, team six you want us a beer <laughs> um, and i was like okay this is so i i honestly think it was a movie made for children um I don't get I didn't get why Spider like saves the bad guy because now the third movie is just going to be the exact same thing. Bad guy tries to get good guy. Everyone is still alive uh, except for the two kids. Um, and, and I don't know why we were rooting for Jake Sully. This guy is kind of a bad dad. He let two of his kids die and then still tries to not sacrifice himself to uh, try to save him. Um, I, I have no idea. I have no idea why why they couldn't just rework some of that stuff to really let the technical uh, uh, proficiencies uh, shine there. On to third, Elvis. This is a movie I've seen many times with many different uh, uh, superstars. Uh, we saw it with um, Freddie Mercury's movie. Um, we see it with uh, uh, Elton John. It's like, yeah, superstar gets fucked over by uh, their manager. Uh, money, the music industry is awful, leads to death. Um, not for uh, Elton John, but um, <clears throat> so I was wondering why I liked um, who, who, the Queen movie uh, mo so much better than Elvis. And I think it just has to do, if you liked Queen, you liked that movie. And if you liked Elvis, you're probably going to like this movie. And I think I have a bias against Elvis. Um, so I, I wasn't, I, I thought the movie didn't add anything to what I um, was, uh, already knew about Elvis. Uh, fun fact, Tom Hanks nominated for worst actor in yeah. the Razzie's character. His his portrayal of that character really took me out. I was like, this guy is just being a weird for weird reasons. Um, and I think I also just don't like Baz Luhrmann movies. On to tier two movies. I have All Quiet on the Western Front, Top Gun, Tar, and Women Talking. I think I've already said what I want to say about those movies, so I'll move on to my tier ones. Everything Everywhere All at Once, Banshees, Triangle of Sadness, um, and I'm gonna go with you. You guessed it, Banshees of Inisherin, best picture, my pick. Um, I actually think everything, everywhere, all at once is going to win, though. Okay. All right, DJ, let's hear it. Okay, so <laughs> disclaimer: I did not see women talking. Um, right. Having said that, there are only a few films I feel worthy of even discussing in this category <laughs> for me personally. And those films, well, actually, okay, before I say that, I will say, because I don't think this is a film that has any place being nominated for Best Picture, but I think Top Gun Maverick has done a lot for movies, especially in the COVID era, because I think it brought people back to the theater. I think for the movie that it claimed to be, it was phenomenal. It was very right. entertaining. It was, it, it, I have nothing bad to say about the movie, but I don't think it has any place being in Best Picture is all I'm saying. So I, I very much enjoyed it. I liked it, but that's all I'll say about it. Um, okay, so I think Triangle of Sadness was a bonkers wild crazy movie i don't know why it's in this category that's my opinion um again i don't want people to think i don't understand what it was saying <laughs> i get it i get what it was saying it just i think it was at the expense of being a good film um okay so tar <laughs> i think was all about kate blanchett's performance so moving that aside um the fablemans i'm just gonna move it aside uh it was 
it was fine. Like I, I don't. It's not like I have anything bad to say about it. It's just like I'm moving aside. Um, Elvis, just get out of here. Um, <laughs> Avatar: The Way of Water, such a cool movie for what it did for filmmaking as in as far as best picture. No. Um, so having said that, that leaves everything everywhere all at once, the Banshees of Inishirin, and All Quiet on the Western Front. So I'm going to rank these three based on where I feel that they exist within the best picture, you know, which one, where they are in acceptance. Wait, what are your top three? Uh, Everything Everywhere, Banshees, and All Quiet on the Western Front. Got it, got it. Wait, and this is ranking it based on, for your opinion, or where you think? I'm not doing a, what I think will win. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm just okay. doing a, what I think should win. So I'm not going to lie. I will say... Throughout the process of even just doing this podcast and talking about all of these awards, my opinion of All Quiet on the Western Front has risen because even for myself, I have picked it as the winner for so many categories. I was like, wow, I didn't realize how many categories I was really going to favor this film. Yeah. Having said that, I don't think it has any chance of winning Best Picture, although it did just win Best Picture at the BAFTAs. But I will say, I think it's a very, very honorable mention to say All Quiet on the Western Front for this uh, for this category, because I think it is a completely solid film. Uh, like, there is nothing about it that I can say, like, and this is where it fell short. It didn't fall short. Like, it is an entertaining film. It is an effective film. It is like heart-wrenching it is entertaining it looks so good like everything about all quiet on the western front on another year would have possibly led it to win this award i really i i'm like surprised to even say that but like i really quite honestly do think that um i've i've kind of already shared my sentiments on banshees of in and i think it's a wonderful film but in my opinion it it's more of a play than a movie. And that's that's the only reason why I'm going to put it as second. Um, Because again, I really do think that it's, it's really great, but I'm putting it second place because everything everywhere all at once is the kind of movie you really only get like once in a generation. It, it is, it is so unique. It is so wonderful. It is so beloved. It's so deserving of this award. Um, I I think it would be a travesty if it didn't win Best Picture. So my my pick is everything everywhere all at once. All right, man, we did it. We said it all. So to wrap up on sound, uh, you both picked Top Gun Maverick. I picked Avatar. Makeup and hair. Um, what was it? I picked All Quiet. DJ picked Whale. James picked Batman for costumes. Um, what is this note? Oh, DJ picked Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. James picked Elvis. And I picked Everything Everywhere All at Once. Best visual effects. We all picked Avatar. Best production design. I picked Avatar. And you both picked All Quiet on the Western Front. For score, I picked Babylon. DJ picked All Quiet. James abstained, but... His prediction is John Williams. Best song, DJ and I picked Lift Me Up. James skipped it. Best editing, we all picked Everything Everywhere All at Once. Cinematography, we all picked All Quiet on the Western Front. Uh, best adapted screenplay, James picked Women Talking. I picked Everything Everywhere All at Once. DJ picked All Quiet on the Western Front. Best original screenplay, Oh, wait. Original screenplay is where I picked Everything Ever All at Once. I picked All Quiet for Adapted Screenplay. You both picked Banshees for Original Screenplay. Director, James picked Banshees. DJ and I picked Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, best Supporting Actress, DJ Stephanie Hsu. James Carey Condon. Myself was Hong Chao. Supporting Actor, DJ and I both picked Ki Hui Kwan, James picked Barry Keegan, Keegan, Keegan. Yep. 
Lead actress, James and I both picked Michelle Yeoh and DJ picked Kate Blanchett. For actor, we were all three different. We have DJ with Paul Mescal. James picked Colin Farrell and I picked Brendan Fraser. And then best picture, James picked Banshees and DJ and I picked Everything Everywhere All at Once. Any last thoughts on all of that? I'll say this. It was a lot of time. It was logistically hard to see all these films, but I do feel better for it because I probably would have not seen The Whale and I probably would not have seen Women Talking because I wasn't super interested in either of those because they... they both you don't like women who talk. That's, uh, <laughs> that, you nailed it. Uh, no, I just wasn't that interested to, based on the promotions for them, but I thought they were both awesome um what about you two well i was just gonna say some of mine come with a caveat of i'm pretty sure i know who is going to win but yeah. i also had a feeling about who i maybe would pick for myself so i guess in that sense yeah your picks your your last tally is correct in terms of like who i would have voted for that's what i wrote down. but that's hard because i'm like i probably would have actually voted for michelle yeo why? You should pick for who you think should win. Why it's so hard. Well, then th you should never be a voter then, DJ, if it's uh, too hard for you. And I'm not one. And I'm not one. <laughs> How do you vote for president? You're like, well, I don't uh, know. <laughs> Trump should win. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah. Also, I'll say some all quiet on the Western Front. All quiet on the Western Front, I would have skipped if it wasn't for this. And that was and so good. Are you, I'm so surprised by how many of these awards I'm like, it fully deserves that award. Like, yeah. I'll say a few more thoughts. All quiet. Um, I, I, this is a weird thing to say, but I like war movies that show how awful war is. Yeah. Um, I feel like Pearl Harbor kind of like got you hyped up for war. Um, Pearl Harbor was like, oh, you get in a war, you might find some sexy romance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> women talking again fly on the wall and just totally real um and yeah i would not have seen tar if it wasn't for this uh this uh podcast yeah. so great idea john Th thanks for having me thanks for both of you doing it um I also, okay, wait, I have one last thing I want to say. It's yeah. not about this year, but I just want to mention sometimes the best performances don't win. And uh, yeah. I just want to harken back to a previous year. Uh, let me let me look up specifically what year I'm talking about. Um, um, just because, okay. just And I only bring this up to say in the 2016 Oscar race, um there there was a best actress winner of uh what's her name um oh my gosh yeah i'll say one other thing while you're looking that up uh i re i have slowly replaced all of the best director nominees and i would consider replacing uh martin medoa or how do you Monadu? <laughs> what am I even saying? McDonough. McDonough. Martin McDonough. Yeah. I would even consider replacing him with uh the was it Sarah Polly? I think she was the she did she no. Who was the director for Women Talking? Was it the writer? I don't know. But the director for Women Talking, because that was awesome. Let me see. So here's so I, I looked it up. So in 2016, Brie Larson won Best Actress for Room. And yeah. I only bring this up because it's another one that I'm really passionate about. And if we're gonna have an Oscars podcast about the Oscars, Brie Larson was wonderful in that film. Yeah. I don't want to take anything away from her performance. Having said that, <laughs> but she was that was so the like culmination of such a campaign to put her in front of every single voter possible every single like you know outlet that could talk to her i mean she was literally in the middle of filming kong skull Isle island and they would fly her in from wherever her remote location was to do press for the film because they wanted her to win so badly and again she was wonderful but i will die on this hill the best 
best, best, best performance that year was Sir Ronan in a film called Brooklyn. It was out of this world, just, it was an understated performance, but it was one of, it sticks in my mind as one of the best performances I have ever seen on a film. And so I just want to say the best performances and the best films and the best editing and all of these things are not necessarily always what is chosen to win. It yeah. is always going to be what was put in front of the voters face the most and what do they remember the most at the time of their voting. So also everyone go out and watch Brooklyn. Just watch <laughs> Search so runner in Brooklyn because it's so good. I'm also going to be curious to see how we think about these picks, like from now years down the line. Because, Five years later. Yeah, I will say that my favorite acting performance that I didn't pick was probably Barry from Banshees. Like he was so freaking good, and it kind of I'm that's the that's the one where I'm looking at and I'm like, I might regret. I might. I don't know. I might. I might. You might lose this game. There. Yeah. <laughs> but um, also, I thought it'd be interesting since there's four uh, there's four categories for acting. Uh, who does everyone have a favorite performance? Because mine was I, I would have to say Michelle Yeoh if I had to pick one. My favorite performance of the whole year is Stephanie Sue. And how about you, James? Yes. Probably someone from Banshees, and my guess is probably Colin Farrell. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and also I looked it up. Uh, Sarah Polly was the director of Women Talking, and I thought... No, I, I completely agree with what you said. Uh, an amazing amazing director. director. Yeah, it was... Yeah. For Anyways. All, all amazing direction. Yeah. All right, well, this went on for quite a long time, but this was great. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I'll be curious to see how people respond to it. And if anyone's still listening to this five hours later, um, however I post this, just comment somewhere and let us know, <laughs> tell us where we're wrong. Tell us yeah, how you sure. disagree. I would, I would be curious to hear feedback from people. But... Yeah. If you say anything bad about Stephanie Sue, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Well, she's not going to win, DJ, because <laughs> I don't Hall. disagree. I don't think she will win. I, I got think... a, a very long career ahead of her. Oh yeah, yeah. She's also on Maisel. You know, she's she's great. All right, see ya, everyone. Thanks for listening, and thanks to these guys for being a part of it.